For 25 years, Bioware has been at the forefront of powerful, emotionally resonating storytelling in video games. That evolution is told through generations of gaming technology and advancements in what we expect from the stories we love. No one game franchise is more emblematic of this than Dragon Age. Originating over 10 years ago, this series has jumped from engine to engine, playstyle to playstyle, but that one pervading story of Thetis continues on. I'm Andy Burkowski from VGS, Video Game Sophistry, and for the last 10 years I've had the fortune to speak to developers, writers, and the minds behind Dragon Age. I am even more fortunate today to team up with the new guard, creators who cherish and protect the lore of Dragon Age, and also try to make sure you all know everything there is to know about the games. Uh, hi, I'm Katie. I run the Guild of Thal on YouTube channel. Uh, I really just talk about lore and also read out codex entries for people to hear. I'm just a fan myself, just kind of doing it for fun, just because that's what I like to do. Hi there guys, I'm Jack Doe, and of course I just run a Dragon Age and Mass Effect news channel and I just want to keep you all updated on the updates for Dragon Age 4. Incredibly modest, but these <laughs> titans, I will call them that, they are working together with me today to figure out every single piece of data, everything official, every rumor, every passing picture on a screen during a dev diary that may contribute to what we know as Dragon Age 4. And we're going to be doing this for the last five years, a five-year look at everything we think we know. So let's go through it all and figure out everything there is to know about this game we love, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. All righty. Cool. All right. So we're starting with 2015. Uh, there really isn't that much because this is the year Trespasser came out, if many of you remember. Um, I will say, like, both of us, Jack was busy yeah. with college, and I, honestly, this was, uh, I really only got into the series in 2014. So uh, I, there might be a few things we missed, but at, at kind of at this rate, there really wasn't that much going on anyway. So I want to say, like, we have most things, but there might be something we missed. <laughs> um, we also, uh, just a, a quick aside, uh, there's some news has come out later in the years, but we placed it in our timeline uh, where it would have happened in real life. So the first thing I'm actually about to say was said in 2018, but technically happened in 2015. So that's why I'm talking about it now. So anyway, in 2018, uh, Mark Dara tweeted out just a couple things. A lot of these are going to be just Mark Dara tweets. Um, when he was kind of giving a spiel about all of his work that he did at BioWare, one thing he mentioned that when, uh, before even Trespasser was released, they actually were... They, they they had a team working on Dragon Age 4. It, it sounded like it was just a small team, but they at least were at least pitching some ideas. Um, and le there was a couple other dev tweets about, like, the Dragon Age 4 is definitely going to have a new protagonist. And when September came out with Trespasser, that was a really major thing they wanted to push on. And that's why the Inquisitor had their hand taken away. That was what made them the protagonist of that game. So if anything, from 2015, what we can definitely say is that they are working on it. And there's going to be a new protagonist. And Solus is going to be the next villain. And that's pretty much all that happened that year. Yeah, so as we said, kind of 2015 going into 2016, we weren't really in the community much. But we did have a few tiny things that went on. Of course, uh, in January, uh, lead writer David Gader left Bioware after 17 years. However, there were plenty of notes that were left for the future of Dragon Age going forward, as Patrick Weeks would then take on the role as lead writer of the, of the franchise. Um, mm -hmm. And then in a Twitter poll, we had once more another tease from Mark Dara asking us if fans would like to see a Dragon Age Tactics game. The, the majority vote for this was yes, and it would be assuming that this would be a different project, not correlating to a Dragon Age 4. It would be something on the side. And the final news bit of 2016 was the fact that Mark Dara gave us a really ominous look at this art book that had a rook and a wolf's head inflamed with the tweet, oh sorry, what's this? And we've still been shaking our head at what this could be. It could refer to what would become Project Joplin. It could be in the final project for Dragon Age 4 that we now know is Morrison. But honestly, we still don't know what this is. It could just be another Dara tease as he just loves to tease us with so many <laughs> tidbits on Dragon Age. Mm -hmm. so, so I just want to interrupt there. Uh, so those first two years, mm -hmm. you said there's not a lot of news, but it is interesting that the series took the step with Trespasser mm -hmm. to really set the stage. I can't think of a lot of games that do that nowadays for what the next game iteration will be, for what Dragon Age 4 will be. Mm -hmm. It seems very unlikely 
that it's not going to be into Vinter, that yes. Solus is not yeah. going to be the <laughs> villain, yes. and there's not going to be a, a, a new protagonist. Yeah. Is there anything do, you, do either of you think from those initial few years where they really set the stage that maybe is no longer in the mix as much, or is there, are those pretty much cemented? I, I at least think those three things are definitely in the mix. Yeah. Um, uh, Jack just mentioned the tweet about Mark Dara asking if we wanted a tactics game or yeah. not. I, I, as much as I would love that, because that's totally <laughs> my shit, I, I just don't. I think that's gone almost, because I think they really are just focusing on Dragon Age 4 at the moment. Maybe they'll pull it out of nowhere. But yeah. I, I think everything they set up in Trespasser, they're really going to try to keep on, because if nothing else, it would just be a whole bunch of fans missing. But what, why did you change it? You know, mm-hmm. like, I, I think they, they're kind of stuck with that now. Um, there have been a lot of, um, Jack, I don't know if you, you've heard this or not, but people wanting like a dual protagonist role because especially yeah, people yeah. who romance Solus, they feel like their Inquisitor story is not done. Or people who romance Dorian's like, well, you know, yeah. I want to marry Dorian. Right? <laughs> I want to Skype <laughs> call Dorian. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I actually created my own video on the dual protagonist idea and how it could actually work in a way that would, wouldn't be too intrusive where you would play a 25% as the Inquisitor and then you would play a 75% as a new protagonist. But that was because of Mass Effect Andromeda and what that did with its mm-hmm. own. It did do a dual protagonist in some aspect where you could play as your twin for a mission towards the end. And I was thinking of mm-hmm. Bioware do like to innovate on the, the Frostbite engine. They want to up their, their, their gameplay. They want to change things. And I think that that would be a natural progression for Dragon Age 4 with up, uh, updating the Frostbite engine. Mm-hmm. Well, that duality that you mentioned that you could play as your twin in yeah. a particular mission in terms of actual gameplay mechanics, they really push the idea in Andromeda, yeah. like we said, that you can play any sort of original playstyle from the previous iterations of the game that were locked off. So mm-hmm. even if they're now, like you said, they want to iterate, they want things to be as best as they can to evolve, maybe the folks working on Dragon Age will take that same gameplay yeah. philosophy yeah. in Andromeda and apply it to story. Because I would love... Mm-hmm. I know it's a, a bit of a pull, but having a really well done and comprehensive story that will allow me to switch protagonists on the fly, almost like, if I may, uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Yes, yeah. This world is already so built yeah. up. I would love to have that opportunity. Mm-hmm. You could probably, depending on how you do it, that might also solve a lot of problems. Like, who do I romance? Well, you got three characters yeah. to romance people. With, so. <laughs> yeah. Surely you have three characters you want to romance, right? Do, do either you remember? this time uh, now about three to four years ago with what you were thinking and feeling about Dragon Age at that time? Because I think both of you mentioned that's kind of the point when both of you really jumped in and said, you know, I'm really going to focus and uh, try to work hard at talking and learning about Dragon Age. You you remember like what you were thinking, what you were hoping for the game at that point? Yeah, uh, to be honest, probably the first thing was I hope this is coming soon, and it's been five years. So I mean, like, we we'll yeah. probably have another two to go. So yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be in my 30s when Dragon Age 4 came out, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, I feel you there. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I I guess one thing that um, – I, what I really wanted out of Dragon Age 4 was really just closure because yeah. I guess I was mm. worried that, like, um, would there be a Dragon Age 5? I don't know. And one thing I, I – I don't think it was necessarily bad. It just – it bothers me because I just <laughs> want it, like, now, now, now because I want to know what happens. So I would almost want Dragon Age 4 to, like, feel like a closure like Dragon Age Origins did. Um, mm. Like, when you finish Dragon Age Origins, like, at least I felt like, yeah, okay, I – all right, I, I, I feel comfortable letting this go. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, Trespasser put that little seed in my head and I'm like, what's going to happen next? And that's just been me for the past five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. For, for me, I think it was obviously all that stuff about closure and, you know, having Solus as the, the next uh, villain, but also mm-hmm. just experiencing a different Dragon Age and seeing Tevinter Imperium and what, just all those possibilities of griffins and all these things that we've heard about mm-hmm. that, that linger on in the future for Dragon Age for. And, and it was the aspects of the different gameplay, different mechanics, and how different Dragon Age will be from its previous ones with next-gen title, Frostbite Engine, how they would then go from creating Mass Effect Andromeda, Dragon Age Inquisition, with the knowledge of and the know-how of how the Frostbite Engine works and how they can upgrade it, mm-hmm. and then seeing what they could do with Dragon Age 4. Um, mm-hmm. And then just going to Tevinter, going to a new location. Mm -hmm. Because obviously we know all about the South and we know about Ferelden and all that because we've been in them, you know, in in Dragon Age Origins. We've spent plenty of time in Ferelden particularly. Whereas whereas Tevinter is just this completely 
dark, enigmatic place where we've never visited. We've only got hints and we haven't even seen that many locations um, bar the comics where we actually get to see a few mm-hmm. cities, but it's completely enigmatic. Um, and, mm-hmm. and just the, the sense you get is it's going to draw real dark fantasy notions. And that's something that I've always since since 2016 wanted to see and wanted to grasp so that that's what i was looking forward to when uh, very exciting all yeah. right so let, let's get back on track we're at seven, <laughs> 2017 now we now know there is some information about solace new protagonist to Vinter, which we're all excited about david gator's gone yeah they were thinking about a tactics game jesus christ i don't know if that'll still be there and we have this damn wolf's head <laughs> yeah. on fire all yeah. right that's the stage, 2017. Take us away. So we're actually going to start off with that, uh, the what I like to call the Wolf Rook book, because uh, it rhymes. <laughs> and uh, we, because at the very beginning, well, it's more like late January. Uh, Mark Dura actually shows us some of the inside of what the book is. Um, a lot of people would question. Now, there, if you remember, there is a Dragon Age Inquisition art book, and the things in the art book are not in this book. So people were wondering, is this just, um, well, minus one image of uh, the Lavelle and yeah. uh, tarot yeah. cards. But um, was this concept art that was never used? Is this new concept art for Dragon Age 4? And then also just, you know, into the future right now, like, is this book even relevant? Because as we're going to get to later, the uh, the development of the game was restarted. So, like, was, is this still relevant or not? We don't actually know. Yeah. So that's that's another thing. In which uh, in the video edit, <laughs> there, there will be images of all this, so you can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, so and then then we move to February, and here's kind of where we get a small little storyline that is going to be concluded in a couple of <laughs> quote unquote years from now. Uh, Alexis Kennedy is hired as a contract like like a, like a contract writer, and uh, what he's actually working on. Uh, I forgot what year he actually tweeted it, so I don't know if I want to say it now or if this is going to come. Yeah, in it was 2018. He tweeted it. Yeah. Okay, I'll let you explain. What yeah, yeah, I can explain that. Because <laughs> <laughs> in 2017, he just announced that he was doing something. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, we then there a couple things happen, especially just some vague tweets, you know, whatever. But the major thing that happened was in October when Mike Laidlaw left Bioware after working there for 14 years. Um, the reason why he left was never actually stated by Mike Laidlaw, and I think because of that, yeah. everything else we've heard is speculation. There have been speculations talking about he left because of what I'm about to talk about is now is when roughly in October 2017 we we don't have a hard date on it is when Joplin which was the code name for the what was the first iteration of Dragon Age 4 was canned and then rebooted into what it will now be known as Morrison which is the whatever game we're probably going to get unless they reboot it again <laughs> um so um out of the I think it was the uh the Kotaku articles is where all these quotes are from right Jack Yeah they're all from the Kotaku article which was released uh, in 2019 but it was just, it, this was at the time of it all going down, everything hitting the fan and Joplin just being canned completely. Mm-hmm. So, so some of the quotes of what Joplin was going to be is, the initial concept of Joplin was played as a group of spies in Tevinter with large chunks of the narrative centered on heists. The goal was to focus as much as possible on choice and consequences. Uh, there was a huge emphasis on this hugely reactive game, smaller in scope than Inquisition, but larger in player choice, followers, reactivity, and depth. Um, people, the, the developers who were the sources for this article say it was very ambitious and many of the developers are actually really excited to work on the project, but all of this was canned because they wanted to rework live service elements into it. Um, the new Morrison is supposed to add live service elements, is supposed to have some elements of Joplin, but we don't actually know what yeah. because it hasn't been said. And is supposedly being built on Anthem's code base, as this will save time. Now, code base, it's it's just like the basic code, not that this is going to be Anthem with Dragons, even though some people at Bioware did say that <laughs> it's just going to be Anthem with Dragons. But at le- even in the Kotaku article itself, they, they criticized that, saying, well, some people who like weren't really in the know is what they said that. And then there's other people who worked more closely on the project where they said, no, it's not Anthem with Dragons, we're just using the code base. So there's there's even been some kind of differences of opinions in Bioware themselves, at least according to the Kotaku article. So, uh, now, yeah. I actually see that as a good thing because it means mm-hmm. that Bioware don't need to start from scratch. So obviously the main takeaway, Anthem's core base, it does scream, live service, oh no, what's mm-hmm. happening with Dragon Age 4? But for Dragon Age Inquisition, Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem, 
Bioware started from scratch. They didn't have a preset of the Frostbite engine, and that's why Andromeda didn't have the same mechanics as Inquisition, like clo um, like a lot of the main stuff. Um, I can't pick anyone's out right now, but it didn't have a lot of the same mechanics that you would have thought, wait, Inquisition had that mechanic. Why doesn't Andromeda have that mechanic? Whereas now... Dragon Age 4 is going to be built on that preset of the Frostbite engine, so it's going to save them way more time. They're going to be able to have a lot of similar mechanics built from previous games, and they're going to be able to just get ahead on Morrison. So it's, it's actually a good thing, because we know that Bioware's you know, biggest issue has been the Frostbite engine, and it seems that they have resolved that by starting again on Anthem's codebase. So I do mm -hmm. see that as a good thing. Which in the article itself, it had, Jason Trier cited some like ideas that the dev team had of what something on Anthem's code base would look at. Yeah. And as a quote, he heard some ideas for Morrison's multiplayer included companions that can be controlled by multi multiplayers via drop-in, drop-out co-op, similar to the old-school Bioware RPGs like Baldur Gates, and quests that could change based on not just one player's decisions, but on the choices of players across the globe. Which is throwing it out there, that sounds like a nightmare to me. But um, <laughs> not, not the drop in, drop out, but the 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 fact that I can't control my own world is like the neuroticism's nightmare, you know? Like, <laughs> uh, and, and that's pretty much what happened in, or at least supposedly what happened in 2017. Granted, Bioware has never confirmed this. Again, they haven't actually denied it either. And yeah. I, I actually trust the Trier articles a lot. Yeah, he's, he's done uh, a few of these big investigations. He did the same thing when Mass Effect, uh, you know, when they announced they're not going to be making any more of those and they're not going to do any more yeah. iterative stuff on yeah. on uh, Andromeda. This is something I have been wanting to speak with both of you about Ooh. for a while because I think it is a hugely important piece of information. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. When this I, the, when this I think the about the, the initial concepts of uh, Joplin, of what they're referring to here, of playing as a group of spies yeah. with narratives centered on heists, it mm. sounds like the game I've been hoping for since I was 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. are not a lot of games that really effectively let you be a spy for one, yeah. and then two, allow you to extend that with a strong narrative and use mechanics that are completely new to do heists is everything I'm all about. Like, it, yeah. I think it would work so well in this world. I think it is an inspired choice. From the information that you just said there, Katie, mm -hmm. do you believe that that initial concept with uh, now Morrison is not going to be included? Will it be a part of it at all? What, what is your take from the information that uh, you're able to glean? I would say that I think it's likely they keep it. And I will say, yeah. because uh, David Gator did eventually leave, and now Patrick Weeks is now the writer, he actually wrote a series of novels. I think the, the trilogy is called the Rogues Trilogy. Jack, do you remember what it's called? Uh, the Rogues Patrick trilogy? Weeks is... Yeah, uh, the one about... The monster underwater? Um, no, that's that, that's feeder. That's anyway. Oh, but okay, anyway, okay. he wrote he wrote a trilogy of uh, fantasy heist books. So like this is if anyone's <laughs> going to do it, it might as well be the guy who's already written a bunch of novels about fantasy heist books. <laughs> this is his thing, yeah. So I, I feel like if anything, this is something that Weeks has at least has dabbled in a lot, and if anything, I think has a soft spot for. And I. I feel like they probably already have a lot of work on this heist thing, so they'd want to do it. I think the big hamp is going to be, though, can they get it to work with the Anthem code base? And the life service element, which sounds like drop-in, drop-out co-op, maybe some player decisions across the globe. I, we're not quite sure what – it might even be something we haven't even thought of. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's where I'm coming from. So the, the, the <laughs> novels are The Palace Job, The Prophecy yeah. Con, and The Paladin Caper. Yes, Patrick there Weeks. you go. Yeah, the Rogues of the Republic series. That's it. Okay. <laughs> so it, it does. It does very much sound, if not like a spiritual uh, form, a, a contemporary of these sort of ideas. Then, if not directly, things that could uh, relate very well to mm -hmm. the Dragon Age world. This idea of live service elements. Have either of you really jumped into Anthem at all? I have. Yeah. Yeah, I have. <laughs> so what? <'cause> I, <laughs> Sorry, the differences of <laughs> yes, I I. I did as well, and I, I found myself really <laughs> loving and appreciating so much of the world building that went into this auspicious new idea that was inside Anthem. Like, truly, Bioware has, and I think probably always will, some of the best minds when it comes to creating these universes in video mm -hmm. games. The idea of having a jump in, jump out uh, co op pilots with you, for me, anytime that I experienced the game, really hampered my experience of this story that I thought was great. I had to play the right, game right. in spite of 
wanted, I wanted the story and I played the game in spite of it <laughs> is really yeah. where I find myself. So yeah, this idea yeah. of, and I think there's many people that experience that same sort of way of experience in the game. Where do both of you see live service elements in a new Dragon Age? Because it likely will have to be. It's their business model at BioWare and uh, through the publisher of EA. It's a part of almost all the games that they yeah. develop. Where do you see that working and are you worried about it? Who? It, Jack, I'll let you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a tough one because I like playing online games and I'm a fan of that. You know, I played Red Dead Online. I played Fallout 76, believe it or not. And I love playing games with my friends and hopping into that and, and getting on that adventure with as many people as possible. And I love that. But for Dragon Age particularly, I play it because it's single player, my choice, my characters. Mm -hmm. That being said, if I did have someone who would jump in and could play as one of my companions, that to me would be fine. Um, I wouldn't mind that. I think that would be all right. I think it could be fun. It'd be bearable. In terms of live service, what we know is previously they put it in the multiplayer mode. They just all, you know, you got your microtransactions in the chests, in the loot, in whatever you want to get in, in the multiplayer mode. If that was brought into the single player, would it be stuff like the cosmetic store where, you know, you want to get a different die, you want to die plaid weave, you want to get a different armor, you have to then... You know, you get a currency in the game and you have to buy that to then get it or you have to grind the game. Is it going to be something like that? Or is it going to be something where you have, like an Assassin's Creed, I, this is my ideal. Anyone played Assassin's Creed Odyssey? Yeah, no. loved it. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. Phenomenal. That's a live Incredible service game, game. In, my yeah. in my opinion. You have your base game, you pay for the base game, but if you want the season pass, you get constant updates, you get live mm. events, and then, you know, every week there's a different loot, there's a different ship to destroy, there's something different every week to keep that live service element going, and then you can pay for those chunky DLCs. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, Dragon Age 4 were to just be a base game, and then it were to have added content that you would pay for afterwards, or that you could get cosmetics, or you could have a store. That would be absolutely fine, in my opinion. We know it's going to happen, and I think that's the least impactful way mm -hmm. where it's going to, you know, completely be a multiplayer game or have a massive effect on the actual single player experience. Mm. I I no, I don't play that many games other than like you know farming sims and Dragon Age so like <laughs> I have a weird mix of likes in the moment so I haven't really played Dragon or Dragon Age uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey yeah, and that's yeah. why I don't really know that experience but um, at least for me like I like I don't mind the what they talked about the drop in drop out co op that's fine what I think. I would not like, though, is the cosmetic stuff in single player. Because, yeah. like, a yeah. huge part of, um, I guess, the dra at least the, the PC Dragon Age community is modding. Mm -hmm. If, it, like, mm -hmm. you can't mod Anthem. You're gonna, you're gonna get, probably get blocked, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. like, the Dragon Age Inquisition modding community is actually still going strong five years after the game. They just unlocked, uh, like, you know, adding in new models into the uh, Inquisition code base or whatever. And, like, yeah. that's has been a huge update. And there's so many people working on it still. And, it, like, you know, five years, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, the only other game that I can think of that has modded that long is Skyrim. Yeah, you know? Skyrim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Fallout, like the Bethesda games, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the Dragon Age modding community is actually going on really strong, and I feel like if you have um, any sort of live service to your single player, that's going to kind of break that and actually like start banning a lot of people just because they're trying to do what they did last time. And let's be honest, you know, past Dragon Age um, cosmetics hasn't always been the prettiest you know <laughs> there's a lot while, while it's not necessarily my cup of tea there's a lot of people that like adding like these super intricate hairstyles and whatnot to their dragon age and mm -hmm. i think a lot of that would be turned off if they can't yeah. actually get that and would rather have to buy it because a lot of them like making that so um i guess for me personally kind of coming from the community aspect i think it'd be a real loss if you start adding yeah. in these uh, single player cosmetics because mm -hmm. you know maybe they'll get their money but i think you lose a real big part of the community yeah, you do. I think no. likely what will happen if kind of looking at this uh, from the outside is the enmeshment of the idea of a single player multiplayer game. We've seen what uh, EA and Bioware and other subsidiaries of EA want to do with these experiences where everything is live. It's always about interactivity. It's always about having these live service elements. And I think that is kind of the promised land for the people behind who's fitting the bill for Dragon Age. They want it to yeah. be not a single player, not a multiplayer, everything working together. And yeah. 
Yeah. Ostensibly, that doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing. Like there, there is a positive way if you can kind of partition things in different places. But mm-hmm. I, I am very reticent of allowing these sort of elements to dictate the tone or tenor of yeah. a game that is so based on your own individual pacing and understanding of the story. Yeah, if we no, if we allow that to be up to a, like an algorithm exactly. good, yeah. I, I could feel that we may lose the one thing that everyone really, really loves about Dragon Age and um, Mass Effect is that yeah. these games can feel so personal. So that yeah. is my yeah. biggest worry. But I don't know. You both had some pretty good ideas of how this will actually go. So, you know, they're, they're definitely not stupid, the people that are developed. They're some of the smartest people in, in you know the industry so I, yeah. I think the conversations we are having must have been replicated hundreds of times yeah. by the development teams yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and even Casey mm-hmm. Hudson has came out and said no we, we want to do something else and it's just trying to maintain that crowd who, who do not want that you know and, and mm-hmm. hopefully yeah. you know they've had those and, conversations and people are very vocal like very vocal <laughs> yeah. about like what they didn't like in Anthem what they don't want in Dragon Age 4 so it's not like they don't know this I, I, I think it really just comes down to like it, the, games need to make money that's just the reality yeah. of the situation mm-hmm. yeah. how can they make money and make make you know their uh, investors happy and how they make us happy and it's going to be hard writing that that uh, that line so like mm-hmm. it I I know there's a lot of people angry at Bioware for what they're doing. I'm not angry because like they're in a you know in between a rock and a hard place. You know yeah, I get it. Definitely. So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll accept like whatever they do. There's probably going to be some element I like. There's just going to be some elements I'm disappointed into. Yeah, but that's just that's just what it is. This is so, how it, yeah, that's how it goes. Are yeah. we yeah. Are, as a collective here? Are we betting that there will be? live service elements kind of 100% guaranteed in Dragon yeah. Age 4. Yeah. Oh, I would yeah. find it bizarre there were no, <laughs> there yeah. no live service were, elements. They were in Inquisition, though. You know, the multiplayer mode was filled with yeah. microtransactions. Yeah. So they've already started it. And, and it all goes back to Mass Effect 3 when they, you know, put mm-hmm. the loot boxes in there. So Bioware mm-hmm. are already in that boat, unfortunately. So that uh, Dragon Age 4 definitely will be in some capacity. It just depends how much yeah. that will be, you know? Well, Unless Dragon Age gets boxed bought out by another company like yes that could, EA's gonna do <laughs> that <laughs> could all change you're right we've seen well this is an example that you just brought up a couple of years ago everything changed so everything mm-hmm. we're talking about now could have no place in any sort of conversation but i, I want to pin you both down because you have <laughs> such a breadth of knowledge in this if you had to if you're if you were taking a bet how do you bet the live service elements will be implemented not your hope but what you think will actually happen in Dragon Age Four, hmm. uh, I can do mine first if you want, because I'll since I proposed, I'll give you guys a second to think. If I was a betting man, I would say that it is what I mentioned before, where they blur. It's I think it'll be ambitious, and they'll blur the line between single player and multiplayer. They will have the player drop in co op where you could, you know, they would be maybe Fenris or something like that, depending on who the NPCs are. And I think they wouldn't have a collective decision being made by everyone, but I do think there would be, you know, extra elements that if you get a full party, maybe you get access to something special. I think that'll be the line that'll blur. That's my bet. I I think adding on to that, because I I, I agree with you for the most part, is also um, like kind of what you were talking about with Odyssey, uh, adding adding in some like uh, events that you can only do with Mm. a party of multiplayer people. I will say I don't know. I don't. I, I almost want to bet they're not going to do cosmetics unless you can use your player character to play with each other. So you're all yes. playing like yeah. a spy that like you a... made. Because ah. otherwise, like, what's the point of cosmetics? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Ooh, I like that uh, idea. That actually like sounds that kind idea. of inspired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would be fun to be like, oh, check out how cool my. PC is oh yeah because it, 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 you're like a spy you know like yeah, if you, you really are a spy nope. yeah. having different cosmetic uh, costumes is like real par for the course for spy shit mm-hmm. yeah but but like if they're not going to have anything like that then I don't know what yeah you know, what would be the point <laughs> so uh, I you see can't it. brag about your cosmetics what's the yeah point? Hey, sorry, yeah go on, Jack. sorry <laughs> I see it as literally the same where you have your single player modes but then you have those multiplayer missions like on your war table like they did with mm-hmm. Mass Effect Andromeda where you had your Apex um, mm-hmm. people and then you would send them out so instead of sending them out like in your war table you would then go into the multiplayer. And that's where you would then get your cosmetics, be your spy, and do that mission with your friends in the multiplayer. So you can be in your single player mode, but then you go to your war table or whatever they have, and that's how you can inactivate into your multiplayer with your friends. 
See, that I can dig because then there could be like multiple updates and like unlike maybe – because that was sort of the plot of the multiplayer in yeah. Inquisition. Yeah, it, it was. didn't yeah. quite pan just out didn't, that way. Yeah. yeah, it didn't kind of fo- – yeah. But but like maybe they could also update it with like little mini cut scenes and so it's like yeah. little mini actually story mm. missions. So if they do that, like and, I, I don't know. I think that could be something positive. And like they had voiceovers in uh, Inquisition mm-hmm. where you had, you know, we're going to go to Orle to do this. And so you can add more mm-hmm. narrative into it and you can actually have more dungeon raids or make – have a cool narrative fight dragons again and you know make it more t- towards the narrative mm-hmm. hmm. these are some great ideas all right bioware we'll talk okay <laughs> so <laughs> let's get back in place so this was an explosion in the development of dragon age 4 in uh 2017 now let's start at 2018 they're picking up the pieces or at least that's when we knew that this happened it could have happened yeah. beforehand it's hard to know exactly mm-hmm. but 2018 where are we? Let's let's uh, keep so, following the news. So 2018, somewhere between the end of 2017 and 2018, Project Morrison, we don't exactly have a time frame, but we know that the beginning of 2018, Project Morrison was in its very early pre-production stages. It was called a skeleton team at the time, and they were working on the very foundations of what this Dragon Age game could be. This was around the time that me and Katie were also around the area, you know, in the community. Mm-hmm. So we started to pick up upon a lot more things. So January... We have Alexis Kennedy just tweeting about vague Dragon Age stuff. Um, again, we'll get to him later on, but basically he's yeah. <laughs> tweeting out that he didn't confirm Dragon Age 4, but he kind of did confirm Dragon Age 4. He's working on the game, and we'll get to him in a second. But uh, we have, in January is when the bulk of the news comes out with Kotaku basically saying that Bioware is doubling down on Anthem, uh, and they pull all of the team out to then work on Anthem, and even Mark Darrow was pulled out to work on Anthem as opposed to Dragon Age. Um and we, we, we go on to basically them saying that they have live service elements. Casey mm-hmm. Hudson then pulls out this thing, uh, this tweet saying, regarding lots of feedback for Dragon Age, I think he'll be relieved to see what the team is working on. Story and character focused, too early to talk details. But we talk when we talk about live, it just means designing a game for continued storytelling after the main story. So, of course, we've got more of that live service. He's trying to calm the folks down by just saying <laughs> that... It's going to be all right, guys. <laughs> it, if, if there's one thing to remember about the Dragon Age community, everyone's scared and paranoid. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. <entire> <laughs> um, and this is around the time that Anthem was starting to hype up its social media. So, again, we didn't hear much. But Fernando Mello did say that every Dragon Age game to date has had some element of live service to it. Whatever mm. that means. So, <laughs> it's nothing to completely fear about. Yes, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. But every Dragon Age game's had it. Mm-hmm. So then we come to April, where Bioware announces that its store is closing, and again, fans completely uh, just lost it. But they just closed their store just temporarily, um, just to st- stop selling their goods. Uh, Dara tweets about the history of Bioware, includes that Dragon Age Four is being worked on, and that he is now the executive producer. He's always been the executive producer of Dragon Age Four. Again, just a few tweets around this time, and we have. Alexis Kennedy teasing for Dragon Age 4 that he's been writing something about big old gothic factions and death. Now, Alexis Kennedy is normally brought on to the writing team because apparently in real life he has a very personal experience with death. I think his dad, his mom and his sister have died. So he's very good at, you know, using that that real real life stuff to then actually write and get into the depths of what death means, departure and what it's actually like to, you know, experience that. So we know that he was working on that for Dragon Age 4. Something about a big old gothic faction, we can speculate on what that could mean, but he was writing some pretty dark fantasy storytelling for Dragon Age 4, is what we can speculate. Mm-hmm. I'd like to interject with, I think it's the Mortalitasi and not to Venture Imperium. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I completely agree. I completely agree. <laughs> um, we had in a, around E3, again, Dragon Age fans thinking that, you know, we're going to see Dragon Age 4. It's been a while. You know, we're, we're wondering where Dragon Age is going to be. And we hear that uh, in a Game Informer interview, Mark Dara confirms that Dragon Age 4 is going swell. Now, at the time, we didn't know about Joplin. We didn't know about Morrison. We didn't know what was going on. But now that we know that Morrison had literally just started its development very early stages in 2018, the fact that Mark Dara in June was saying it's going swell, it's probably very, very early in development. Mm -hmm. Um, So there really wasn't that much going on for Dragon Age 4. This point, the entire team was shuffled on to getting out Anthem um, at, a, at a good point and, and cracking on with it. So really, Dragon Age 4 was 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 nothing at this point. Um, we have Harden Hightown was released and it, you know we got more uh, references to the Exequitors. Exequitors? Exequitors? How do we say it? 
Okay. Executors, like a business executors. <laughs> like a, <laughs> so. And uh, this is where we had IGN Greece publishing an article saying that voiceover was in the work and that Dragon Age 4 would be released two years later on. Now, Katie actually uh, had uh, the author yeah. of this article reach out um, saying that an anonymous source who worked as a voice actor for Bioware has confirmed that the voice acting has been completed completed for a future game of the company. When asked if the game was Anthem or a new Mass Effect, the answer we got is that the new game belongs in a renowned series that takes place in a medieval setting. So To, qu- oh, to quickly you know, interject, go- like what happened here it's like i think it was like in 2019 i released a a video of like other dragon age new stuff and i mentioned that this article came out and i'm like this article came out saying two years time which in 2018 so it would be coming out in 2020 which is this year so i i I just raised a lot of doubts like with this conflicts with the trier articles we know i don't think this i don't really believe this article so the author came out Mm -hmm. was like look girl hold on i'm like okay that's (laughs) 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 i i (laughs) Okay, I feel awkward, but at the same time, I still don't believe the voice after you talked to. Yeah. Maybe it's someone reputable, and maybe their work is done, but like I don't like the game's not coming out. And they, I on. doubt that anyone who is a VO actor will know uh, like conclusively when a game is going to be released if they're just doing yeah. work for. It. I, d- I doubt that's something mm-hmm. they would share with every person that's you know a, a random townsfolk in <laughs> Thetis or something like that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I, which I, I probably the one thing to get from this is that Bioware hired someone because the original article was in Greek. I had a Google translate it. So <laughs> they hired someone who probably speaks Greek and is Greek. And so there, there maybe there's a couple of those. And uh, around, uh, Odyssey came around this time. They also had a lot of Greek actors. So like the big speculation there is like, is Tevinter going to have a lot of like Greek ins- right. inspiration from it? So that's probably what happened. And then, you know, you had some townsfolk saying, oh, it's going to be in two years time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which we know at the time we didn't really know we could speculate on from Jason Schreier's articles, but we didn't know for sure. But mm. basically now we do know <laughs> that Dragon Age 4 will not be coming out in 2020. <laughs> yeah. God, what if though? <laughs> yeah. I know. What if they, they haven't denied out, like, it. It's just very <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and then moving on, we had uh, VG247 basically covering an article that said Dragon Age and Mass Effect will likely be influenced by Anthem. And we didn't really know what it meant. I believe that this could have just been the code base. You know, the fact that Dragon Age mm-hmm. would be built on the code base. But it, it was more talking about how Bioware are going into that live service element um, and how they're pushing that ahead. Uh, and then Dara tweets out that they are working on a Dragon Age game, which at the time was... Honestly, just the biggest confirmation that we had that Dara was working on a Dragon Age game, that Dragon Age was not dead, and that there was another game coming out. Mm. Uh, And then based on the reactions above, Hudson tweets out that both games would be designed from the ground up and based on what these games should be. Now, we also had Mark Dara basically at PAX West confirming that Dragon Age 4 would be in the works. And the Triforce Quartet actually came out and played Dragon Age Inquisition's main theme. So that was mm. just confirming again that Dragon Age 4's existence is in the world. And that was at uh, a PAX West booth. We had John Appler and Patrick Weeks tweet out something very ominous about the Titans' future. Uh, very ominous, a good little plot tidbit that basically, apparently the Titans are not these evil, threatening beings. And they're very friendly and would be lovely to talk to in the next game. I did, um, just to interject there, I love what both of you have done just exploring that <laughs> real subplot that was only kind of mentioned in, I think, the DLCs of yeah. uh, Inquisition and, and finding the hidden stories there in terms of where the story is going and, you know, what is the most interesting things in Dragon Age. That sort yeah. of stuff for me is like right at the top of the list. Yeah, and that, that's that is as well definitely going forward to be huge yeah. um and that's just from a dlc yeah that's just a tiny mm-hmm. little tidbit that was on the side and it's actually going to completely change dragon age 4 going forward if, if we look at the law but um mm-hmm. there's going to be a future of them <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully <Yeah. laughs> uh, everyone can get on board and liking them um Anyway, sorry, but, continue. You're in November, I believe. So just so to point out, November. it's very interesting because at this point in time, we're in November in uh, 2018, I believe, uh, Anthem has yet to been released. Yeah, but there's Anthem's still yeah. so much fear that nobody wants that Anthem stink on yeah. anything yeah. Yeah. that yeah, has to absolutely. do with Dragon Age. Any any mention yeah. of it at that point is just not even there. So it, it yeah. is fascinating to uh, see that retrospectively. 
To which to talk about like to people who like don't know much about like the history and are coming in maybe as new fans or or whatever. It's not that people didn't think Anthem would do well, even though it didn't. Uh, they didn't want a multiplayer game, and that's yeah. really what it was. People did not want a Dragon Age multiplayer. And then as soon as like uh, the Anthem beta came out, um, I actually forget. I think that might have been December, Jack. Do you remember in the beta? December. I know you played it early, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, I did, but I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, December. It. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, ironically, December 8th. So it was actually the day after we got some no pretty way. auspicious news no uh, that we're about to get to. Yeah, there you go. Release. So it is funny that like as soon as they said, "Hey, look, there's some Dragon Age." Oh, by the way, remember Anthem's still there. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. And that's why all the news was just at the time, just he, you know, Mark Darrow confirms Dragon Age is, is is in the works, and everyone's like, "Oh, it's amazing." When honestly, he's just saying that they're working on the game. But mm-hmm. it's because we just didn't want Anthem. They just there was this large fear that we don't want to see this, you know, Bioware go down this path of live service mm-hmm. and multiplayer. Mm-hmm. And that's why the Dragon Age news is so ah. You know, Dragon Age 4 is in the works. We are going to be saved inevitably in the future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we get to November. Now, this is around the time when, you know, we get excited because Bioware released a blog that says a few things about Anthem. But of course, we only care about the secret Dragon Age stuff that they mention <laughs> and that we should look ahead for December. And now we get to December where we had, first of all, a Venture B article. This would have been... Uh, it wouldn't have not been the first Dragon Age 4 day, no. Um, there's, a, there's a community thing called Dragon Age 4 day, but of course it only existed in 2019, so this is before its time. No, no, that, that uh, no, it was 2018. Was it 2018? It was th- yeah, that was oh, the wow. first one. Yeah, sorry, so the first Dragon Age 4 day, we did have a Venture Beat article that actually came out saying that there was a mysterious source claimed that the next Dragon Age would be three years away, around 21, 20, uh, 22. And the, re- the real reason why Mike Laidlaw left was because in 2017, mm. the game had been trashed in favour of a live service business model. Fans were very sceptical, but this would later be echoed again in the Shrier articles. So apparently the real reason Laid- Laidlaw left was because the game was trashed for live service, which mm-hmm. is basically true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I to quickly talk about the Venture Beat article, I want to give it credit because it really was the first source we ever heard that like that was a thing that was happening. Yeah. Um, but it, the, the, it, there was a lot of like errors in the article, so people really didn't want to believe it. So I almost feel bad I, for them. I, I didn't they believe just, it. No, I, I, yeah, I didn't that. either. And, yeah, and I was like, I'm not covering this. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, like if they just edited it a little better, we might have we might have thought something. So like, it, shout out to that. That sorry yeah, we didn't believe. We're you. sorry, <laughs> but yeah, it seemed to speak the truth. <laughs> yeah, mm. no, they were right. I mean. Um, anyway, the big one. The big yes. one. So yeah, at Which, the time, uh, just to set the scene as well. So this is uh, what is the actual day that this thing comes out? December sixth. Okay, so December it's 6th. just it's so fascinating because you think before this point in time, we have seen nothing that yeah. has to do mm-hmm. with Dragon. I don't even think there was like a confirmation little video being like it exists or anything like nothing. that before yeah, this. Yeah, there wasn't. Yeah. And nothing. there's so much, I remember that year, there was so much antipathy and worry that, you know, the entire, the game is completely trashed. And that was before we saw anything to do with anything about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I don't I mean, know. It was just, it was just fan <laughs> no, it fears is. and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Anyways, continue. Sorry about that, Jack. But there was... No, it's all good. There was, like, everyone and their mother did not expect anything Dragon Age at the Game Awards. Other mm-hmm. than that article that I touched upon, I was like, okay, yeah, it sounds like we're going to see some. Because Casey Hudson came out and said, look out for the secret Dragon Age stuff. And where's a better time than the Game Awards? So mm-hmm. um, there was a little bit of hype in the community, but a lot of people were like, nah. But we did see the Dread Wolf Rises teaser, and honestly, we all lost our shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. The community went crazy. Because, of course, this game that we've been thinking about talking about making videos about actually exists and it's hitting on the marks that we want it's solas it's the dread wolf it's ominous murals and it's red lyric and it's crazy shit that we all want for a dragon age game you know the first glimpse of what we can tell is you know it's not a multiplayer live service game it's talking about solas it's talking about that future plot it's hitting on these future beats that we want so the first tease that we got was was everything that we all wanted to see for what mm-hmm. a potential tease what it, what it could have been and, and yeah, we all lost our shit. Um, and we all spent countless hours making breakdowns on what we saw, still, you know, trying to gather our thoughts. But we also got a few of little tidbits on the side. John Appler, who is the narrative director for Dread Wolf Rises, as it's now known, um, says that he will actually give us a Dragon Age game that does right by us. So that should give, you know, fans a little bit of hope that John Appler, the narrative director, he knows what he's doing. He knows what goes into Dragon Age. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The Dragon Age website uh, a day later... Uh, updated we found out that 
Previously, Mark Laidlaw, uh, Mike Laidlaw was the uh, creative director, but now Matthew Goldman, the previous art director on Dragon Age Inquisition, is the new creative director. So the creative vision for Dragon Age 4 is in good hands because it's the art director. And he, you know, he knows what he's talking about. He knows how to build Vadis. And the TLDR on this website was basically, Mark uh, is very excited to show more, as we know, because he loves to tease and loves to kind of, you know, uh, get in there. And Matthew states that this is the strongest team yet and that they are venturing forth on the most epic quest ever. Wow. And so, that's, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> 2018. <laughs> one of the yeah. biggest years, I would say, so far of what yeah. we have seen in uh, Dragon Age Four. There's uh, many things I want to talk to you both about of what happened in yeah. that year. Let's start in descending order because you've just mentioned it. The trailer of what we got it to see. Jack, I think you said it all right. It, like it hit all the notes that we wanted. Yeah. There's a sense yeah. of finality, a collectivism of all those little moments from the previous games. Uh, Katie, what was yeah. your experience? How did you feel about that? Um, <laughs> God, it, so it was very I was in a Discord uh, with uh, some people to to watch the thing together, and we weren't, weren't expecting much, and so we're all just like chatting. And I I was recording it just for funsies, and so like you can see me like I'm typing something mid sentence, and then the Bioware logo comes up again because we'd already see something for Anthem, yeah. and like everyone's flipping out. <laughs> we're like, wait, what? <laughs> what is this? So, I guess that that was my experience of just like wait, uh, something's happening. Uh, so yeah, I for me, I will say like. I think it hit everything we wanted because it was completely story based. Mm -hmm, I wouldn't yeah. say it necessarily means that like, oh, it's definitely single player, or something, multiplayer, or stuff like yeah. that. But like when I, I did like a one hour breakdown, I'm not even joking uh, about the trailer. <laughs> and when I like, at least looking at it real closely, one thing that I kind of decided is that they didn't really give us anything new. They just told us what parts that to, that we already had that we need to look at. And I, I think that's kind of what the point of it was. Of it, it's, it, doesn't, it actually doesn't tell us anything at all about Dragon Age 4. It just was a collection of things we've already seen that may actually be there, like the Red Lyrium Idol or yeah. something the Red Lyrium Idol represents. So I almost think that like it's, it's almost like a promise. Like, this is something we mm. are working on. We yeah. know these are the things that you're interested in we're going to get to it because yeah. like, it didn't have a title it didn't have a date it didn't have anything and i even think the audio from it is actually reused from trespasser because yeah. it yeah. sounded a lot like the trespasser dialogue mm -hmm. um and we know there's a whole bunch cut out of trespasser so like i i actually think it's it's i don't want to use the term reuse a lot of assets because there were a lot of things that were new in it but just like it it, it i don't think it like confirmed anything mm, it, other yeah. than Dragon Age 4 is being worked. Like there was no new yeah. character models. We, you have no idea of what it's going to look yeah. like or, or mm -hmm. any sense of that. It was basically yep. just the that same art style that was popularized in Inquisition with mm -hmm. some new pieces of art and uh, yeah, I think you are correct that it is audio that is literally from the, yeah. the <laughs> end of the, the previous game. If there's one thing because you mentioned that it, it uh, just deals with things we already know if there is one or two things that you think this little glimpse will indicate will be in Dragon Age 4, because that's what this video is all about. That's what this is all about. <laughs> yeah. Trying to figure out what Dragon Age 4 is going to be. What do you think was in there that's a pretty good indicator of what will be in Dragon Age 4? So what I th so I will say that uh, I'm I'm really bad because I forget the artist's name, but the artist Jack, if you know who that is, shout it out. Uh, Fumbra, 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 there, Nick Fumbra, yeah. Nick Fumbra. Yeah, there it is. Okay, Nick Fumbra. He he's the guy who did all of the murals in uh, Inquisition and Trespasser, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it was Dara that said like this guy does really good work and he draws exactly what he means. He means to put a lot of imagery in it. Mm -hmm. So when we when we actually analyzed the thing that I did for like an hour. Uh, <laughs> It represented in each of the little aspects of, of the, the mural are actually the big threats of all three games. You got the Solus and maybe the Dreadwolf, you want to add that into uh, Inquisition. You have the little um, uh, uh, Red Lyrium uh, idol mm -hmm. from Dragon Age 2. And then in the little, I call it the tambourine, the little like um, <laughs> half circles around the thing. Uh, it, if you actually count them, it's the same number of old gods. And as of old gods, there's stu still two still around that represent the blight still coming, which would be Dragon Age Origins. So it's the big threats of all three games. Mm. And now they're all combined into one image. So does that mean whatever threat we're going to um, 
encounter, which if that's the Dread Wolf, if you looked at the Dread Wolf in the actual image, it's covering everything. Mm -hmm. It's on top of everything. Does that mean the threat that we're going to be facing is bigger than all those three things combined? I don't know. And that's, okay. ki that's kind of what I took from it. Ooh, Jack, yeah. what do you think? I think Kate has got a really good hot take there. I think it, yeah. Like, <laughs> just the Dread Wolf, like, being the biggest and baddest enemy or, or whatever so far, you know, that it's going to encompass all of the previous narratives. I was really surprised to see the Red Larry Mile come back. Like, I was like, whoa. Oh, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. took me completely by surprise to see that. that, that that'd be the first thing in this trailer. Um, and just to, just to hit on the, those notes of the previous games is, is what I really like. Like, it feels like it's reflecting a lot of Dragon Age mm. 2. And that's a game that people don't really, you know... Uh, generally in the mainstream people don't like i know yeah. in the community everyone loves it but i prefer to hit on those notes i really like that so i think it's a, it's an ode to the previous games mm -hmm. but as kitty says i do think that this big bad is gonna just encompass all of those villains or all of those you know antagonistic plot lines together and just completely throw them out the water and be like nah this is the biggest threat that we've got yeah to which to add on to that, you said you didn't think the Red Lyrium Idol would come back. Nobody did because it explodes at the <laughs> yeah. end of Dragon Age 2. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so. then we can get it in Inquisition as a sword. But it's like, okay, so it's a sword now. But then apparently there was a second one. Or I don't know, there's some, you know. Well, we all thought the, the sword that you get, which is kind of like, it's a cool sword model. You just want the cool sword model, yeah. you know? We just, yeah. It was just like a fun little thing. We didn't actually yeah. think it was real. Yeah. Yeah. And if I recall, there, so. yeah, there was the, also the model for like a cosmetic DLC. I remember I had some red lyrium weapons and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So What's it's, up with that? <laughs> yeah. It's definitely yeah. Uh, a vein, if you'll allow me, of, uh, yeah, whatever. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go back to uh, Alexis Kennedy because I think both of you kind of perked up on that a little bit if I'm saying yes. the name correctly. So you mentioned before, it was very early on in the year that we just covered, that he is writing something about big old gothic factions yeah. and death yeah. because of his familiarity to it. Those are some real dark fantasy themes that yeah. I think kind of make Dragon Age really, really special. Uh, I heard a little bit, I think, from you, Katie, that you had a hypothesis of what that is and how that will be affecting Dragon Age 4. I'd love to hear more about that. So um, when this news came out, everyone thought it would be Tevinter because Tevinter is the big, scary, black magic place, right? Well, so what he said was a faction that's focused on death, I believe was the, what, something along the lines of yeah. that. And the faction that's focused on death is the Navarra Mortalitasi, which is literally a group of mages that believe that when a person dies, their spirit goes into the Fade and displaces the spirit of the Fade. Uh, that would become a demon. So to make less demons in the world, they put that spirit into the dead person's body, and then they have a, literally a big city of the dead that they put all those dead bodies in so they can live and do whatever they want and not hurt people. And it's just mages that take care of that. What else would a big mage <laughs> faction can focus on death be? It's not the it's the mortality. Yeah, it it's has the mortality. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then I would also say in the um, I, if I'm remembering correctly, in the Wolf Rook book, they had like a lot of costume designs, and there were some that looked like kind of Navarin inspired. So that's yeah. also where I'm like, there's maybe something. And Navar is right by Tevinter, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So it, it, if anything, I actually thought it was more that rather than uh, Tevinter. So that that was my theory. On Jack. It. I, I I completely agree with the Mortalitasi. I think that's that's spot on. Uh, and again, just other silly ideas like the Last Moon Cult, which is a cult that worships mm -hmm. Lucican. But that's only because it's the worship of Lucican, who's the next old god to awake. But, well, it could be uh, Razakel's the other one, I think. Yeah, yeah Razakel and Lucican are the two yeah. left. I think Lucican's the next to awake, or Razakel. I can't remember. But the I, well, I don't know, I don't know if there's an order. But okay. yeah, it's one of the two. <laughs> one of the you two. got fifty percent chance. So. <laughs> but there's a there's a cult in the D and D who basically go around the Grand Tawny and they just kill people and sacrifice them. That yeah, sounds and the pretty dragon pretty, tabletop. Yeah, so it's pretty. Um, so does it seem like maybe because he's not? Um, I'm not as familiar, but he's not coming in as lead writer or anything like that. Could this just be? No. Just a guess. Yeah, this so, could so be a subset of what he's doing. In 2019, we're going to talk about Alexis yeah. Kennedy a bit more. Yeah, that's there's a tiny mm -hmm. bit more that goes mm -hmm. to it, but um, yeah, that's. We're not to, to people watching this like, uh, wasn't he accused of something? Yeah, well, I just we're doing it in order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doing yeah. it in order. But okay. There is something that we do need to touch upon with Alexis. But I think that he was just hired to write about this faction. And that's really about it. So obviously he's not talking yeah. about characters. Could you imagine, though, if it is the mortality, the city of death that you mentioned there, yes. Katie? And maybe if it is really exploring these themes of death and maybe some of this is true that we see and experience some of the old characters that have died based on our choices 
in the uh, the previous games, you know, like even we're talking about Dragon Age 2, that family member, the mom, people like that, like just to have those little moments, I think would be uh, for I, me very, very impactful. That, well, that would be cool. I don't know if they would do that because it's it's that culture is strictly Navarin mm-hmm. and the the only Navarin character we have would be Cassandra and Cassandra hasn't died yet. So the only one I could see actually being there would be a Cassandra. Um yeah, but uh, it maybe maybe listen. If some it's sort all of things... magic. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, magic. like maybe maybe they introduce new characters. Like, yeah. what if it's your new PC's mother and family? Mm-hmm. What if they're there? Yeah. You know, like it, it could be a whole new characters we don't know yet, but we we will have some sort of connection to. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stuff like that. <laughs> All right. I think we have squeezed 2018 dry. Now, yeah. 2019, things are picking up. Uh, we just left it yes. where we saw the trailer. We got some some news about different people that are working on it. They're confirming that it's happening. There is some kerfuffle about Anthem and the live uh, elements of it. Now, take mm-hmm. us to 2019. All right, so the very first thing in January, uh, so I will say, like, kind of during this time, this is when BioWare's all focused on Anthem, so there really wasn't that that much. Yeah, yeah. But um, we did start seeing more things on LinkedIn, because people know how to <laughs> do that, of, like, trying to hire for more people specifically for Dragon Age, and one was for a multiplayer team. So people were wondering, like, oh, is there going to be a multiplayer mode rather than that drop-in, co- drop-out type of thing, or is that what they mean and they just want to make it simple? Um, so that that was that was it for January. And then February, also not much because this is when Anthem came out. But one thing that did happen was uh, my podcast co-host Jordan. Uh, he's really into the economics, so he actually pays attention to the EA <laughs> like uh, investor calls. Mm-hmm. And one thing that he listened to was that EA was blaming Battlefield Five for. Um, Oh, well, he, he blamed the poor sales of Battlefield Five on them pushing a single player service rather than a battle royale that was really popular at the time. And what he was kind of worried about and, like, hearing some of the things that they were actually saying um, were just, like, EA really blames single-player things for the the downfall of the game, which you have to actually talk to people who played the game. There wasn't really so much a single-player they hated. There was It was a couple other things. At least that's what I've heard. Mm-hmm. I have not played the game. But from people that I've heard that, like, have played the game, like, their, their issue wasn't the single-player. It was, like, you know, some sort of, you know, other thing. So anyway, so that was kind of people wondering, like, okay, if single player doesn't do well, what are you, what are you doing there, EA? What's your what's your business? So mm-hmm. that's the whole thing. Uh, and then April comes out, and this is the big month because yeah. this is when the Schreier articles come out about like what's been happening behind the closed doors of Anthem and Dragon Age. So pretty much everything that we talked about in 2017 is in these articles, and this is the first time we know about it. And it's 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 really a big thing, and yeah, I, I'm not gonna like go ahead go on, back on it because we already yeah. talked about it. Um, sorry, I got out of breath. It's okay. I'm pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baby just takes everything out of you. <laughs> anyway, but uh, the the one thing to add on to this is that um, Bioware did actually have a response. So as as I think Schreier said, like he sent the article to them, like I'm going to be publishing this. Do you have any words? Mm. They didn't say anything, but. Yeah. Minutes after the article came out, they did release their own, um, yeah. the, their own uh, blog about it, essentially condemning. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, and, yeah. A lot yeah. of people, a lot of people, including people in Bioware, uh, were very unhappy about it because it seemed very dismissive. Mm-hmm. Because one thing that the article did bring up was uh, crunch time and how it was hurting the developers. Like people were talking about in Bioware, like they had to lock themselves in rooms just to cry because they were just so stressed. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was just a really bad situation over there, apparently. And this um, announcement from Bioware was kind of just condemning that and like, oh, you know, we're a big old family. But, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, so it it angered a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, later on, there would be a um, email sent around to everyone in Bioware where it was a little bit more sincere. Like, look, we hear that you guys are stressed. We're here that crunch, you know, things are getting bad and we want to do something about it. So we're going to have a couple of team meetings and try to restructure things a little bit. We don't know what came of that. Yeah. But yeah. at least people at Bioware were hopeful um, according to Schreier, at least, we're hopeful that this was a good sign and a good step forward. And the idea, I, I guess the uh, the conceit was that this was the crunch more for Anthem, correct? Because that yes. was, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the, the yeah it was, it was with the release of Anthem and then, you know, the the other effect of, of it not being good and mm-hmm. just, it all came out after that. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like... Go ahead, Jack, the, sorry. That, that, sorry. <laughs> I feel like that, um, the response, the statement, I feel like it wasn't 
written by Bioware. I feel like EA or, or management from EA wrote that. I don't think it was actually... That's my personal belief. That's speculation. But I do feel like that wasn't actually from Bioware itself. Just the way that the, the actual developers from Bioware were reacting to it. Yeah. It didn't even seem like... Well, that, probably you know, would be like part of a PR team that doesn't have direct contact yeah. with the... Uh, yeah the development mm-hmm. side of things. It is something that I think maybe we take a moment just to talk about here. Like yeah. the idea that you work so exceptionally hard spending countless hours, hours that we yeah. couldn't even imagine to create these games that people like all of us adore and think are important. It's got to be concerning to feel like in Anthem's case, you work that hard and you you make those sacrifices and you end up with something that unfortunately doesn't have that sort of landing and you're expected to keep working because it was a live service sort of game. So that crunch never really ended. I think maybe now because they're a year out of development, maybe they're slowing down a bit. But still, I I, I think it is something that, uh, you know, we should all be aware of. We love these games, but man, there is a price, isn't there? Oh, there yeah. is, yeah. yeah. If, if you know, in any regard, it probably got worse after Anthem, you know, yeah. because of the patches and having to fix it and everything. Like, mm-hmm. in, in any regard, I feel the crunch would have got even more severe. Uh, if anything, also like there's like the uh, I think this is another Shire thing of like Anthem Two where they have a big update to like make a lot of things better. Like they're probably just poor things you're gonna have to have it all over mm-hmm. again. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Go back straight into it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the yeah poor Ant, which uh, I will say the well we're we'll get to that later actually <laughs> never mind that's later ooh, in the line foreshadowing uh, ooh. Uh, so um, coming back to like the timeline uh, one this isn't like super important to Dragon Age Four but we both Jack and I keep getting messages on it so I just want to put it in here yeah. um, <laughs> so around all this drama was the very first time it happened but it's been happening ever since um, GameStop and uh, I think it's called Game in the UK yeah Jack. the UK game yeah yeah. Yeah, well, they they have a thing that they do is that if any game is like even hinted or announced, they will throw it up on their website for sale with the release date of whatever year it currently mm. is if they don't have a website. So during this time, they had Dragon Age for for sale, uh, uh for pre sale on their website and with the release date of twenty nineteen, and everyone's like, oh, it's happening, it's gonna whatever. <laughs> <laughs> to which Mark Dara then tweeted like, hey, if anyone can get this, send it to us because we would love it. <laughs> so. I just love that. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to no. He's like, no, if you, if you can get it, send it to me. <laughs> yeah. I want to know how we fix the problems. You know, like. <laughs> so if, if you see it, it uh, what, what generally it looks like, it's a black cover with just white text of Dragon Age 4 on it. <laughs> that ain't it. So I'm sorry. Do not pre-order it, by the way. <laughs> it's not real. Uh, I just want to throw that out there because, I, like, you, you know. It comes up all the time. Anyway. It does, it does. <laughs> so uh, we go into May, and now we're kind of cooling down from Anthem a little bit. People are, you know, they're more focused on that, doing whatever. And here is where we get an announcement that the Dragon Age 4, or Bioware, or whatever, is entering full production now. Now Dragon Age 4 is the main thing, and then everyone else is complaining that Bioware has abandoned Anthem when that's not the case, because now <laughs> Anthem is being worked on in Austin, where Dragon Age is now in Edmonton. Mm-hmm. So um, the new Biowarmer shirt also opens for Jinx. That's just so it was closed. I think um, what year was it? I think you said it was it seventeen. It was twenty. Yeah, it was it was seventeen. Yeah, it closed for a fair bit. So yeah, 17. yeah, it was in the two thousands. We're good. Yeah, it was there. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> it, was yeah. it closed and then reopened. The, apparently, really, the story yeah. there was that whoever was doing their merch like did a couple things very badly. So like we just need a new person. Mm. So that was a new thing. Um, around this time, uh, Alex Wilton. Reagan, I believe, <laughs> AWR. Yeah. She's AWR. A, she was the voice actor of the Inquisitor. Um, she starts hinting about a lot of like voice things. Some of them are for other games. Some of them not. She's very like you know hinty about what she's doing. Yeah. Um, but it, it kind of gets fans the speculation that like maybe Vo and her, when her case even mocap was in the work because uh, we we already at least heard in the IGN Greece that there was some Vo work being done uh, allegedly yeah. in Bioware. So maybe around this time, this is when people are starting to do voice work, mocap. We're not we're not quite sure. So just throwing that one mm-hmm. out there. Um. So then in August seventeenth, uh, for Man- Fernando Mello actually leaves Bioware. We mentioned him earlier, uh, I think once, and he he what he does. The actual title was kind of debated. So I. I, I'm not quite sure what to call him, but he was a yeah, senior producer yeah. who worked a lot on life service elements. Yeah. Mm. So he might have been done on his job. He said it was the least disruptive timing as it would likely get for him to leave. Um, I, I Is he doing something new now? I can't remember if he's doing it. He has just now. announced that he's doing something else now, and I can't remember what it was, but he is finally now back into doing something else. 
Yeah. So, it, I mean, like, you work for a place. He was there for, like, 12 mm-hmm. years. So you work for a place for 12 years. You, you want something fresh. I get it. Uh, yeah. But, again, people are freaking out, like, oh, no, he's leaving. <laughs> really, anyone leaves at Bioware, people freak yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I took then, that as oh, good go news because, he's you know, he's done – he says that he's, you know, he's gone at least disruptive timing, and his actual role – was to prove out the core concept of the game. So what he's saying mm-hmm. is, guys, I've proved out the core concept of Dragon Age 4, and I've left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I thought yep. that was, you know, it's a good thing. Which in September, uh, the Casey Hudson uh, kind of like announces on the Bioware blog that I think he, the, the exact words is, I can confirm indeed that the Dread Wolf rises and yeah. that it's in pre-production. <laughs> so at the very least, we're in pre-production. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least of September uh, 2019. Yeah. Um, this is also when Bioware actually moves to a new office. Um, so they were tweeting a lot about things like that. And there was uh, they, they invited a whole bunch of um, uh, news reporters from Edmonton to like oh, come cool. and like talk about you know fun stuff or whatever. And uh, they had like you know pictures around the office. And one of the pictures there was a, a TV screen. I, I assume it was something animated, but you know we were only seeing a still image of it looked like Solus. And there was another one that looked like a dragon. And it wasn't anything we'd seen before. At the same time, it looked like it could have been an Inquisition. So people are yeah. wondering, is this new or is this just unused footage mm-hmm. that we didn't have that they just brought out? Because why not? It is yeah. just to, I, to interject there. Uh, in mm-hmm. Toronto, where I'm located, there's uh, Ubisoft Toronto, which is the, the big Ubisoft hub here. And they often will have events where they invite people over. And when you do mm-hmm. walk through those uh, studios and just the mm-hmm. those cubicles and see, you know, what's on that screen? What's that little piece of, of <laughs> art that people... <laughs> are working on it's very very tempting to look at everything and say like okay i've discovered the secret <laughs> <laughs> there's gonna be a dragon and dragon that may be that, yeah. <laughs> but it is it, it's amazing how if you're a fan that it feels like you're kind of in the inner sanctum so to speak <laughs> yeah you're inside yeah <laughs> Um, September is also marks the day where we start getting a couple of people who work as animators at Bioware mentioning things about like animating. Um, I think this would happen on later on in the either this or 2019 or 2020. I can't remember, but like there was someone asking like, "What do you want a dog to do?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. people were like, "Ooh, is there a dog companion?" Ooh. <laughs> Stuff like that. So and then I guess the big thing that happened in September was September 20 is when Alexis Kennedy is accused of sexual harassment, um, and this yeah. you know was a huge deal. I. Honestly, I really don't know much about the case. I don't want to say really anything about it because I really don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just, I, I don't want to, that's over there. I don't really want to deal with it. But anyway, people were wondering, like, Bioware, you were saying you were working with Alexis Kennedy. What's what's the deal on that? And so Dara confirms that Bioware had worked with Kennedy on a previous incarnation of Dragon Age 4, but they, are no, but they no longer have a working relationship. Mm. So that's people awesome. wondering, is... Because, like, he was talking about, um, you know, being on the game after the um, Joplin the, thing, yeah. The, the reboot. Yeah. 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 So people yeah. are wondering, like, is it still in there? Is it not? What's what's going on? So we, we don't really know don't. how much of his stuff is in there. But at least according to this, I would say almost none yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, yeah. According to this, absolutely none of it. And what we know is that he was working on Joplin, we can say, from February yeah. to, like, October. So all of his work would have just gone to Joplin. Um, mm-hmm. It may have transferred over, but the fact that they don't have a working relationship is pretty evident enough. That so all that mortality stuff we talked about, out the <laughs> window. It, maybe it's out the window, or maybe they just had someone else rewrite it. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, it also like could be it, just it like initial be- uh, plot point ideas, like um, what's it called, story mapping conceits yeah. of yeah. world building yeah. and then I know a lot of uh, development that has to do with that it's not exactly one person comes in and nowadays at least does it all mm-hmm. there's a lot of you know here is the implementation now someone else will run with it mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah definitely so yeah he could he could have just been like gave the big outline and someone else wrote the words so <laughs> I, it, it, yeah sorry I'm like, <laughs> I have so much hiccups now <laughs> but yeah anyways that that was Pro- something that I've, I've been trying to allude to that that's we keep talking about Lexus Kennedy because this is a thing that happened and I, and I think it is good to address it. But I, I really that's would it. be surprised <laughs> if his credits are yeah. in Dragon Age. 4. Me too. Me too. So yeah. that's that's just something. Um, another little thing that happened: there was an Edmonton Expo, and they had a bunch of little cutouts of people, and they had a Solus cutout that like the model looked different. There, there's been a couple other times where like things will happen and the model looks different than what we had in Inquisition. Yeah. So people are like, "What's going on?" Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, uh, but it, it's it's weird in that it doesn't necessarily look like a like a new model. It just looks like it just looks different. Yeah. <laughs> you look shocked. <laughs> yeah, no, the Solus one looked like he was about to cry. It was yeah, very strange. Yeah. It's it's very weird compared to the other ones. Mm-hmm. You got like a happy yeah. modern, and then it's just Solus like oh, very <laughs> sorrowful. <laughs> the villain. <laughs> yeah, it was it was, it was kind of weird. Um, so then we jump to October, uh, and we have. The in October 29th, EA released the quarterly financial space statements to investors, and a question about Dragon Age was actually asked. And to those who weren't there and those who listened to EA's head report, Dragon Age 4 will likely won't be released until April 2020, is what they said. Or I think you think it was like the financial yeah. quarter yeah. 20, yeah. whatever, whatever the, the term is, but people are saying around that time. So, and then according to the earnings call, there are plans for not only Dragon Age 4, but other Dragon Age products too. So this is the the big news, I think, that we need to discuss yeah. in a little bit. Because, nah, you know what, yeah. we're going to discuss it right now. Because yeah, those two it. pieces of information, <laughs> usually when they have these uh, financial calls, they are not necessarily even meant for the the press. But the press often yeah. will sit in. It's, it's literally just for the right. investors to see where the company is going. April 2022 and more yeah. Dragon Age games. Those words on a piece My of paper, birthday. what does that conjure up for both of you? The tactics game that we thought was dead. Yeah, <laughs> that's now what you come out. See, I was thinking of uh, getting more money. Like, ooh, we want that Dragon Age stuff. Ooh, I hear you guys going to do more. So let's give them, yeah, you know, yeah. more product. So I was thinking of from the investor standpoint. <laughs> I, I think me and Katie have both talked about they already have a Dragon Age app so why yeah. create another one yeah. they, they, it could be the Dragon Age Keep you know the, I mean th- they could try and find some way a live service to keep I don't know why they would want to do that but they could do something like that they could do a Dragon Age web app they've done them in the past mm-hmm. they could do another one they could do a spin-off game sorry they could do the tactics game um, it does from else, else from could... the actual quote it does sound like they're talking about a game when they're dealing with products yeah. as opposed to like a service, I think that's usually the corporate speak. If it's something that's mm-hmm. ancillary to your core product line. Uh, so it does sound like they're maybe at least planning. Do you think that there'll be something released within that same year in conjunction even with the release of uh, Dragon Age 4? Good, good, you know, good, good, yeah. I am not even sure to be honest because at this point, you know, we're just waiting for one game. I can't imagine waiting for two, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the other than do you want a Dragon Age Tactics game was tweeted out once, like, four <laughs> years ago at this point. Yeah. We, we have nothing on it, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. And, and as much as, like, everyone would like that idea, like, uh, you know, I would be very excited if say, like, oh, with Dragon Age 4, we also have this Dragon Age Tactics game. I yeah. would love that. At Me the same too. time, yeah. like, I would be very surprised that that came out of nowhere. Um, I, I also think that... Uh, yeah, I know they already have a Dragon Age mobile game, which apparently still turns a profit, hmm. by the way. Yeah. Um, I uh, I don't know. I, I also wonder if maybe because because uh, when I, I did a video on the Dragon Age mobile game not that long mm-hmm. ago, and on the uh, the people who actually run it, who was a Bioware company but now is EA owned. I forget. I think it's EA mobile i forget Mm -hmm. what it is but um they are hinting at like they're working on something new so is that another dragon age thing i don't know i know every anytime like the command and conquer series as soon as it was mobile everyone was everyone was out we're done yeah yeah so one one thing i would say though if if we could have a dragon age tactic game that's full of terrible microtransactions it it, it's it's so to speak if we can have dragon age tactics crawl so dragon age 4 can run (laughs) Okay, sure. <laughs> I'll take a terrible microtransaction filled tactics game if Dragon Age 4 is clear. Well, of it, you let know? let yeah. me paint yes. a grisly scene for both of you now, though. Go so April it. 2022, we're in that area. We know a lot about Dragon Age 4. It's, it's coming out. But then we realize that the division that happened early on in the development mm-hmm. cycle of Dragon Age left a lot of core materials that Bioware and EA are not just going to throw away. They're, I mm-hmm. uh, Picture this. Dragon Age 4, it still has live elements. It's still going to be a single-player experience. But they've taken this idea of multiplayer and created a very own game with that that will have some of the story included uh, telling another part of the story so they're allowed to diversify and maybe use some of that Joplin stuff that fell uh, off the radar that they weren't using right, now right. essentially taking a what should be an included part of a game and maybe charging 39.99 for it <laughs> 
I mean, that's a worst so, case that I'm kind of gaming out right now with both of you. <laughs> I, uh, to be honest, I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't have a gut reaction of hating. Yeah. That okay. Because. Yeah. Now keep okay. Keep in mind my perspective here. I absorb everything, Dragon Age, absolutely everything, <laughs> and I think most things are very important. I've spent way more money than thirty nine ninety nine getting all the novels yeah. and the yeah. graphic novels and whatever yeah. that tell what I think is very important stories. Now other people don't, and that's yeah. totally fine. Yeah. So another you know whatever game, as long as it's somewhat fun and it's not just complete hot garbage, mm-hmm. like that doesn't bother me because I'm used to that, you know. <laughs> I so do think an average consumer, though, would have yeah. a big problem with that. Like, if if this thing that I just gamed out did happen, I do yeah. think that the average, quote-unquote, gamer would uh, be uncomfortable. That it almost reminds me of uh, way back when in Mass Effect 3, the Javik DLC, if if you all remember. Yes, where that it was, on the day. And it was completely yeah. playable yeah. on the actual game. Yeah. Like, everything on was the there. Disc. Yeah, they yeah. just needed the yeah. little code. Yeah. And that, you know, I'm a bit of an old that head is, here. Yeah. But that made people furious. Well, yeah, people were real mad about Trespasser too, because remember, it was uh, they couldn't on, run on older consoles. So yeah, anyone okay, who had yeah. an Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 is like, well, <laughs> then only do I have to buy another copy of the game. I have to buy the DLC and the other console. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And, and Trespasser really is the end of Inquisition. Like, yeah. It, it just does not feel complete without <laughs> Inquisition. Yeah. So yeah, I I get why people would be mad. I wouldn't be mad but, because I just have my ass up in Dragon Age. But yeah. I, I get why people yeah. would. Jack, where, how do you feel I, about it all? I'm in the same boat. I live and breathe Dragon Age. I would buy it yeah. and I would play it. And I probably wouldn't even complain about it. I would just <laughs> just consume it. But no, I get I get the controversy of it and it would it would be like, eh. But it's another Dragon Age, you know? Mm-hmm. So I would consume it. Mm. I, I also think another perspective to consider here is that we've gone five years without content. Like, yeah. years away, you know? <laughs> like, we're, we're literally thirsting for anything. Yeah. <laughs> just, just two games side by side. Like, I, even if we don't even get the other one for a couple of years, like, I, you know, that's I'll get to it. You know, I, the, yeah, I guess just more content at this point is going to get me excited, even if it's mm. bad content. Now, ask me when Dragon Age Four comes out; I might have a whole different opinion. <laughs> yeah, I guess my yeah, that was absolutely yeah, yeah. My my only concern would be that it could partition off parts of a game that doesn't mm. allow the the core product, the Dragon Age Four, to be in its fullest and as best as it could be. Mm-hmm. That's only the the biggest issue for me, and because I think we are in a different mm-hmm. kind of boat than most people if it has that name on it we're going to get it no matter what yeah. so it would be interesting to see what they mean by other products if it is uh, like you mentioned just a, a mobile game a new iteration if it is different services or if it is something uh more mm-hmm. substantial what do you think about the release date does that seem because we've they've been teasing other ones do you think that would actually be the time frame that dragon age 4 is released yeah, that would be uh, I, yeah. F- yeah. four years of development if it's 2018. Also, April is my birthday month, so you can't <laughs> pick a better. You can't pick a better month. Like Cyberpunk was delayed recently, yeah. and I was like, no, because it was the day after my birthday. Aww. But um, <laughs> but it, it's the thing is, it's at a bare minimum of April 2022. Yeah. So that means it could go into 2023, which gives them even more time, which would be four, five years of development, which I think would be perfect because we want as much, even though we're already waiting and even though we're already dying, we still mm. want as much time as possible on this game so if it's four four five years perfect has plenty of time to bake in the oven (laughs) and uh yeah we we can continue to die like right now (laughs) yeah it it to say like i actually think that's probably more likely because at least so far everything we've heard like bioware i think bioware themselves think it's going to be that that's the release date like that was in the what the try articles that's been what like a couple other sources have said I, I think that's the more realistic date that Bioware has set for themselves. Now, like Inquisition was also a delayed a year, yeah. so who knows yeah. if like that happens later on? So Andromeda was delayed, mm. Anthem was delayed, so that that's the thing is. Mm. It, well, I, I well, how much was <laughs> Anthem delayed? I think it was only a couple yeah. months. Yeah, oh, only a couple yeah. months from twenty eighteen to yeah. twenty nineteen, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a whole, definitely a different from a whole year from Inquisition. But yeah, yeah. They, both of them were delayed. So yeah, I would imagine there was is going to, if we say April 2020, it's probably going to be like, you know, October, November, something like that. Yeah. Maybe even after that. But um, so yeah, I, I, I do think that's actually kind of mm. realistic. It is interesting to think about how the landscape will be different then because we'll be likely oh, yeah. two years into 
uh, new consoles at that point. So yeah. will Dragon yeah. Age 4, we have no idea how those consoles necessarily will work with backwards compatibility. It's all speculation now. But it is interesting to be to think if this would be a quote-unquote exclusive for the next generation and for a game that's been developed. They have to be aware, obviously, that the, the new consoles are coming and developing for it. I yeah. wonder what that will mean for the final product that we get. I, I, I actually worry about that yeah. a little bit. Me too, because, me too. Uh, that, that's what happened with Inquisition. It, yeah. it came out right in between the releases, and it actually hindered it a lot. Mm-hmm. It did, and, it really did. Uh, the, like, the last two DLC, Descent and Trespasser, you could not get for uh, the older consoles. You had to get yeah. a new one. Uh, there was a lot of things that were planned Cooked. for Inquisition, yeah. and even like fully, for the most part, developed, but because it would not fit on the PlayStation or Xbox 360, they had to cut it. Mm. So... I, I think if anything, like it, it, it being in that same position again is almost a little scary. It's like, okay, it did not work well last time. It, yeah. What's going to happen now? Um, you can still watch like the initial, it's a PAX East or West video in 2013 mm-hmm. and you can watch the initial Dragon Age Inquisition and they have stuff like destructible environments and cutscenes mm-hmm. when entering a level and so many things that were built for yeah. the Xbox One, but they were all cut because of the previous generation. So mm-hmm. I, I really hope that this game is, you know, PC and next console oh, because it yeah. really did hinder the experience it'd be quite a uh well again i, I think th- uh, some of the speculation of the new consoles is that it will be a lot more open to backwards compatibility and whatever that means that it won't be as hindering of you know the yeah. next generation literally meaning that there's a limit of what the uh, generational gap will be so hopefully that will uh, not be as uh, defined and delineated because yeah. that would suck. Let's get back to it. We're still in November of yes. 2019. <laughs> We're still and November. looking at this Google Doc, there's still a lot of uh, Twitter links. So please, Katie, continue. <laughs> yeah, this is where Twitter gets pretty active, at least for mm-hmm. me. Um, the, there's So I'm not going to go over all of it because a lot of it's just kind of like what ifs. Um, like more hinty posts from people that yeah. could be working on it. Uh, probably one of the bigger things is that Joanna Berry, who is a, a writer, uh, tweeted that there's voice work coming in. So meaning yeah. that whatever whatever voice work was done has now been edited enough that they can like hear it and you know probably even ask for recuts or I, I don't know how I don't know how to make a game <laughs> 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 you know stuff like that. Um, this is also around the time when it's the fifth birthday for Dragon Age Inquisition. A lot of people were saying that like the the, the Bio tweeted out that it had like a little message for Solus and it was just a cute little thing. People was like, oh, it's a hint that Solus is coming back. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we yeah, and it, it, we, and it's in Tevinter. We've known that. <laughs> for years now. Um, there was also probably one of the more interesting things is uh, Dara starts tweeting out a whole bunch of like hinty <laughs> images and one was a screenshot of, uh, it, like it looked like a, pic- a phone picture of a screenshot, I should say. <laughs> uh, of, Such of a, a piece. Yeah, I know, of like a snowy scene. And uh, this, the way it was styled uh, looked something that would be in Dragon Age, which people are like, how is there snow in Tevinter? Because that's supposed to be... Um, it kind of closer to the equator. Uh, so, so Thetis is supposed to be in the southern hemisphere, I should say. So, like, it, Tevinter begins up at the top, should be hotter. Why is there snow? To which he then actually tweets out, like, like you know, some some blog about, like, how there can be snow on the equator. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so random but hilarious. Yeah, so it, some people are like, oh, so maybe it is Tevinter. Yeah. Maybe this yeah. is Dragon Age 4. Um, there's also this another thing he uh, tweeted out, which looked like a working animation of a spider. So far, every Dragon Age game has had a spider in it, so people are wondering if, like, that's going to be in there. Um, so that was that. And then in December, we it's... it's December's just more kind of tweety stuff. Um, we have more animators, like doing stuff and tweeting about things that they're working mm-hmm. on just kind of like fun little things like oh, you know i got the shot of bow what do you need for a dog that kind of things um and this i'm trying to think of like if there's anything that i really want to point out because it's mostly just like it's just tweets yeah. yeah just tweets that reference dragon age 4 it's really like um in december 4th um this has actually been something that's been talked about uh in previous years like i know one was in haven con um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Patrick, people are wondering, like Patrick Week, because Patrick Weeks now goes by by they them pronouns. Will there be they them pronouns in Dragon mm-hmm. Age Four? And uh, they were like, "Well, we're working on it. No guarantees, <laughs> but we're yeah. trying." <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it's it is something that Bioware is working on, but it's it's it, it, depending on technology. We we we're not quite sure. Uh, and then that that was pretty much all of 2019. Yeah, and I think if you're you're watching this, you'll see all the the tweets coming up now. But this doesn't seem to be anything yeah. too 
important except for maybe one tweet from Arby's that I think is pretty important. Oh, well, that's <laughs> the most important tweet. I of cannot them all. believe you missed it, Katie. Please illuminate us. What? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, there, there's like a story behind it though. Hold on, let me really huge... click on the. Okay, so basically, John yeah. Apple. Um... Jack's got the Arby's. He's got it. All right. Yeah, Jack's got <laughs> right. the Arby's. So basically, um, John Apple originally they were talking about going to Wendy's and having a Wendy's, but actually no, John Apple loves Arby's. And what happened was Arby's saw this tweet, or they or they got tagged in the tweet, and um, they they John Apple is working to get a brand deal of Arby's for Dragon Trump. So <laughs> well, we should expect like in a joking way, like <laughs> in a not joking real. way. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. basically, Arby's or Dra- or Bioware made a meme of the Inquisitor holding an Arby's burger. Mm-hmm. So. Could this mean that we're going to see a new type of cuisine in Tavinta? <laughs> uh, I don't know. No. It's in the air. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, it's funny. Now, we, there was a recent tweet the other day where U-Haul were actually tweeting at Bioware oh, as well. Oh, yeah, that one was yeah. surprising. U-Haul? So, really? Yeah, that was a weirder story, yeah. I think, than the Arby's. So, you, you know, good brand. Um, <laughs> yeah, Arby's is known yeah, for I, that I want to tell too. the U-Haul story real quick. Because that, yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah, yeah so... Uh, um, <laughs> It, I, I guess a Twitter friend, I would say, L. L. Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe she didn't want her, her name blasted. Out. I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> L. <laughs> I call her L. Uh, she and her, her girlfriend were just like tweeting some like funny stuff about like uh, Liliana is a confirmed like U haul buy. Like I, I don't know if I, I don't know if both of you know this, but there's like a joke of like. Um, I, I've always heard it particularly, particularly with lesbians, where like they're very quick to like move in with one another, so like they're always sponsored by U-Haul or whatever. Um, <laughs> so like that's that's kind of the joke, and so they were referencing that, and then U-Haul comes up with a joke <laughs> with like like the, the, just on two couple fans who were talking about like Dragon Age and U-Haul had a reference to Dragon Age and U-Haul in like their tweet, mm-hmm. you know, like it was something like Liliana the the maker is the maker gay. Is gay. Explain yeah. that Liliana no. So it, it, it was in, in and then like you all just kept tweeting back and forth, and it was just a very confusing time. Like, what is going on with corporate Twitter, guys? Slow down, <laughs> slow down, Twitter. <laughs> so uh, Twitter's a weird place. And when I was a kid, I never thought something like you all was tweeting yeah. about it's, Dragon Age. It is. <laughs> it is a brave new world. It is a fascinating <laughs> place. So that is closes out our. 2019. I feel like we already kind of discussed the the big news of that year, which is, of course, the proposed mm-hmm. release date, yeah. the idea yeah. of more products, uh, mm. da, 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 nothing else that I can really, basically just the confirmation that they are working and that work will continue. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. About, like voice work yeah. and animations on the work. Just, you know, small tidbits around that stuff. We are only about a yeah. month into, at the time of this recording, of uh, January of 2020. But there has been, Jack, if I'm not mistaken, a little bit of news so far of this year. Yeah, we we had the first issue of Blue Wraith come out, which is always exciting because obviously it's Dragon Edge Media. Mm-hmm. Uh, it hints yeah. at future things, but again, the, the, the full issues are still going out. We've got another two to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and Dara is just he's just memeing he's <laughs> on the current meme trail as he always is and he's just just a constant tease just constant teasing and uh, he's tweeted us basically get a man you know the uh, the Dolly Parton no sorry not Dolly Parton I think it is um, isn't it is Dolly Parton? I think yeah, it yeah. is a Dolly Parton face meme is yeah. it a Dolly Parton meme basically he said get a man who can do all of this and it's just instead of you know Tinder um, and the other social media it's just Twitter 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 <laughs> and it's it's actually Mark Dara tweeting out that um, the, the Rook Wolf uh, again so mm-hmm. does that confirm that perhaps this is still on the go mm. or is Dara just just tweeting like again it's Dara he he just yeah. compl- you know so he tweeted out the rook and he also tweeted out the redacted photo of Dragon Age 4 which has a tiny 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 little corner of it that isn't well, unredacted and that's it that's a joke though. That, <laughs> yeah, there's a story a meme. behind that yeah but but basically Dara is again just you're just teasing us but there is that that rook and it, it makes the question is that rook still relevant mm-hmm. maybe maybe not but it's dara <laughs> and then just the other day we got alex wilton regan tweeting out this very 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 ominous um redacted for um hmm. tweet basically saying i can either not confirm that i'm currently working on redacted uh, in the much anticipation of redacted oppositely a-list megastar redacted which will be announced in redacted 2020 thank you so i I will say, when I read that, I thought it was a movie because now she does movies. So yeah. I don't know if that's actually Dragon Age related. I, it's already been, and the thing is, it says it's being announced in 2020 mm. yeah. in Dragon. It's already been announced. So I, I again, it's Alex Walton again, <laughs> but it's probably. She, she's, 
<laughs> yeah, she. <laughs> she's like hashtag Dragon Age, hashtag Inquisitor, hashtag Twinter, and we're like, oh. But it, well, it, she it, also hashtags all yeah. her other major roles. Like Assassin's Creed and, and yeah. the, the You guys are really in the trenches like here, it seems, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're desperate. <laughs> else. Uh, I, I will, real, real quick, I just want to talk about uh, Mark Dara because like, I feel like we've been talking about all the important stuff. Yeah. Well, there's a whole bunch of other stuff we didn't talk about when it's not important. Like uh, there was yeah, one yeah. tweet he did, I think it was about mm, a year ago, maybe, maybe, maybe less than that, uh, when all he did was just shoot blurry photos of a stairwell <laughs> and then oh, with the, with the yeah, response of yeah. Dragon Age. Like yeah. <laughs> he, this guy purposely just bullshits to see how many people yeah. will well and like how it. many pc gamer funny. articles will come from it and things like that yeah oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you do yeah and there was one that was funny where it just said dragon age dragon age dragon age but then yeah. you've got like ones that genuinely get triggered and i think it's pc gamer that are the ones that are like well this must be confirmed <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. mm, no <laughs> yeah I, I, I feel like pc gamer like they'll say that like dragon age confirmed for solace and yeah. and we're like come on guys <laughs> and even the developers on the game are like yeah it's we're obviously got it <laughs> Oh man! So we we did I we did just kind of was... uh, gloss over it a little bit, but the Blue Wrath is the comic graphic novel, correct? Yes. Yeah, it's it's the one with Fenris as the main feature on the cover, but it's it's talking about uh, these Tevinta characters that are going on this journey. So I know that Jack. Well, sorry about that. I know that Jack, you've been at least made one video about it so far. What have yeah. uh, is there anything really noteworthy that you think needs to be said? about that because it is new media it is kind uh, of in in a place that we're likely to be going you know what's the The, yeah definitely the comics as a whole i know that fernando um denunzio is very in the community and he always is commenting on youtube videos and he has commented on mine a few times and in this issue of blue riff all the characters are now together so what he does say he's tweeted at me a few times is that the comic characters are actually, they are created just for the mm. comics, but with yeah. the intention of pushing the narrative forward for Dragon Age 4. So there is a lot of communication between the Dark Horse writers and Bioware in terms of where Dragon Age, where the writers at Dragon Age want the narrative to go and how the, the Dark Horse writers can get to that mm. point. Where can They can push the narrative to that point. And so it's now focusing on Red Lyrium and a lot of... Um, Mm-hmm. basically chasing the Red Lyrium idol and trying to get this Red Lyrium artifact and this other mysterious artifact. So I can say that it is pushing the narrative forward and that, it, you know, to tune into the comics, you will be getting a better idea of how it's going to establish Tevinta mm-hmm. and Dragon Age 4. They, they are set in Tevinta right now. They just introduced the Arla Fan Forest. So it is very interesting, you know, environments and the narrative it's going, but ultimately it is leading up to a future for Dragon Age 4's mm-hmm. narrative. Mm-hmm. And it is set post-Trespasser as well. Mm-hmm. So all these characters that we're being introduced to there's a hypothetical that we could definitely nod to them in the future, but could see them. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's not it's not intentional, and they don't intentionally create it for that purpose, but it's something that they would love. The, the, the comic writers say that they would love for Veya and Sa'arin to be in the future mm-hmm. games. So Something I want to touch on real quick is that like Blue Wraith isn't the only one, and we, we didn't actually go yeah. over any of the other media releases. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, I think we mentioned Hard in Hightown, and I think I glossed over the other comic years. But yeah. uh, Night Errant is a series that's already come out. Mage mm-hmm. Killer came out, um, and then Deception. Uh, Night we- Killer, Night Killer, Night Errant <laughs> and Deception uh, were both written by Nunzio de Philippus and Christina yeah. Weir, who are doing Blue Wraith, which I actually quite like them a lot. Uh, Mage yeah. Killer, I'll be honest, I forgot who wrote it. Uh, that one, I I'm, forgot who wrote it. <laughs> I, I, I'm iffy on that one. We're gonna leave that there. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> um, so the Blue Wraith is the continuation of Night Errant and Deception. Yeah. So like, if, uh, if you're okay. just going to buy Blue Wraith, you will be confused um, because it, it yeah. references yeah. those. Yeah, it does comics. just start completely like these characters that you already know, mm-hmm. and this is their journey now. It is yeah. funny. Like the, the main character isn't Fenris; it's uh, someone who was in. Yeah, uh, yeah. It yeah. is yeah. funny though because I, I do recall in Inquisition. The hilarious moment, because I was not as uh, connected to the all uh, the ancillary media, where I think Varric mm. is just mentioning, like, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, Sten is the new Aeroshock. Just thought you should know. Yeah. And you're just, like, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> what was yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, this happened the off comic, screen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody did yeah. the yeah. Dark Horse comics. So it, it is funny <laughs> just to to think that, you know, like you said, the... These are not going to be, from what you know, uh, included in the uh, the main story of really? Dragon Age yeah. Four. But yeah. there was a moment like that way mm-hmm. back when, where something really big yeah. happened that yeah. included the previous character. So it will be interesting to see what that well, goes. Well, in 
in uh, the last issue of Deception, which came out just a couple days after uh, the the Dread Wolf Rises teaser, um, they the the very last issue was oh by the way that thing you've been looking for is actually a red lyrium imbued weapon, which yeah. would be the mm. idol now. So we're like oh that's what we're after right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, interesting. And that is continuing the comic, so it is actually pivotal to the narrative. Mm-hmm. Not to mention that the Kuhn, the Kunari are invading all of Tevinter and they've destroyed mm-hmm. two cities already. So mm-hmm. that's again building up the establishment of Tevinter. Yeah. So it is obviously mm-hmm. very intriguing and interesting. I gotta get up on these comics, Jesus. Forward. Yeah. <laughs> now, I will say there is another release coming up in March of a new novel called Tevinter Nights that we haven't touched on yet. Um, yeah. It's it's now it's, it's unlike the other novels where it's like one writer like doing a whole story. This is like a, a like a bunch of writers on the team. Um, doing uh, like a oh, collection cool little of anthology stories. series. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like how many short stories? It's at least a couple dozen. Oh, it, God, I don't even know that. It's like maybe yeah. twenty or something. Like it's, 20, it's a fair amount. So it's going to be a, you know good tidbits of law going everywhere. Well, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. there we have it. I think we have now. Everyone, give yourself a round of applause. Great job. We did it. This is the formative list of every piece of information that the experts believed needed to be uh, commented on for the development of Dragon Age 4. It is interesting just from the onset, at uh, the outset rather, to see how the development has changed and how tumultuous it really does seem and whether or not this is the tumult that you expect with most games or if uh you know maybe dragon age this franchise that we love so much is going through some some real hard times in the uh the last few years we're very far into this show but i want to take just a bit of time now to pick your brains both of you on what you really think will happen in Dragon Age 4. We have all this different information. We have all these thoughts. You're intimately yeah. aware of the uh, the series and the different things they've touched on. If, again, you were making a bet, what do you think will be the main story arc? We'll start with that of Dragon yeah. Age 4. Whoever wants to jump in. I'll, I'll go first. I mean, yep. I really like, and this is just obviously my complete interpretation, I really like Joplin's core concept. Playing as a spy, it logically makes sense. You go from the Inquisitor, you know, the Herald of Andraste, having a pivotal role in basically building a massive alliance upon the south of Fadis. So the reason that we're going to have a new protagonist in Dragon Age 4 is to obviously avoid Solas. We don't want to be infiltrated by Solas' spies or Solas. Mm -hmm. So we need to play as a nobody. That makes sense. It's the natural direction to go from the Inquisition's army to then go into a small covert group of spies. You know, someone who can get this job done unnoticed without any hassle, basically being a nobody, so Solas can have no influence or no knowledge of their existence. So I still want to go with the idea that we will be, you know, maybe not a spy in particular. It depends how far in deep they do go with Joplin's concept. Again, I really like that. And that is still my dream Dragon Age game. Um, And we do know that remnants of that will be in the game. But we're going to have to play some sort of small covert Mm -hmm. role because we can't go from being, you know, the Inquisitor or someone huge or grandiose when the pivotal role is we need to get to Solas, uh, you know, infiltrated. We need to, we need to, you know, be operating in secret because mm-hmm. he has spies everywhere. You know, he's going to be, he's going to be everywhere and he knows. Mm-hmm. And the Inquisitor says, you know, we will defeat Solas or we will do this, but we need someone new. And so I think that that will be our next protagonist, this nobody. Uh, and essentially I feel like as a spy or as this nobody, we'll be just tracking down influence, power and information around Solas and Tevinter. You know, we won't have any previous establishment mm. on Solas. We won't have any knowledge, any understanding or any experience, which makes it great for new players who want to jump on the franchise to come in. But that being said, we'll be the best person in Fadis for this task because we'll have no knowledge and understanding of him. You know, we can, we'll, we'll be able to start afresh. Um, and I think that that will be the natural the lead. And, and the idea of these heists, I believe, would have incorporated the idea of going in search of elven artifacts, maybe as MacGuffin mm. items, you know, going for trying to beat Solas to the punch, trying to get the, that, that potential power before him. And that's the idea that I took from heists, you know, I don't think of a typical bank robbery yeah. or anything like that. I think of going through elven ruins across Tevinter or in elven forests or, you know, going across these, these ancient places in search of relics that would beat the punch to Solas. Um, tracking down information on this elven god, stealing magical artifacts, and it, organizing these strategic heists um if you had to guess then, how do you think your hope at least 
and this is why I love talking to y'all about this. How do you think this story would end? We get to speculate. We get to input what we okay, know. Okay, this is, yeah, the, the grandiose. Okay, I'm just going to go full on. I call it tinfall, full on stupid. <laughs> just go on full on. Okay, Solas is going to go back to Skyhold and he's going to destroy the veil there. And I think he's going to actually destroy the veil um, because uh, the, the, uh, law apparently... Potentially, <laughs> potentially, <laughs> law. <laughs> potentially, the veil was created at Skyhold because it's the place where the sky was held back. Again, law, whatever. Uh, there you go. Um, <laughs> so I think that Solas will inevitably destroy the veil, and our Inquisitor will either fight him or oppose him, or Lavellum will get some sort of confrontation that they can try and just win him back. But inevitably, he will destroy the veil, or he will die because Solas walks through Denantural, and that means that his journey is full of uh um what does it what does it mean I walk <laughs> my it? journey i walk the journey of of death uh, of death i walk the journey of death yeah so yeah. He, he's basically he's walking into his own suicide and he knows that and he's self-aware of that and he even says himself he is going to die so i think that he will either die in the inquisitor's arms if you romance him or he'll die fighting the inquisitor or the inquisitor will be his death but the inquisitor will also die mm. That's how. Oh, what? I think that yeah, I think that they're gonna end the narrative of the Inquisitor and Solas together because my whole issue, uh, my reason that that Dragon Age Four will, will like, like the, the thing I don't like is the fact that the Inquisitor started the journey with Solas and therefore they need to end the journey with Solas. Like you know, it's it's their villain, it's their friend, it's their mm. lover, he's their companion. You know, you ever become his best friend, or you ever hated him, or you ever romanced him. And I feel like if it just ends without the Inquisitor being there, or without the Inquisitor having a piece in this narrative, it's just going to feel underwhelming. Because, you know, we've been there since the start. He's the one who's been lying to us from the start. Oh, he's been with us since the start. And if it doesn't end with either Solas or the Inquisitor together, then... It's a little bit like the but Hawk that, and Varric thing if from the uh, the previous games yeah. in, in Inquisition. Yeah. That he was there as kind of a witness of Hawk's story. Yeah, yeah. No, I, and, I have a completely Okay, but I just, I just before we go to that, <laughs> so just again, to because I love summaries. It helps my brain work with yeah, everything. Yeah. You're thinking, you're hoping at least, spy, doing heist, dealing with the... Spy yeah, heist. completely new, yeah. uh, elven, elven artifacts, artifacts, fighting for power, and then final scenes... People are dying. Solus is dying. He's he's ripping up the universe. Uh, something to do with his love interest, <laughs> but the Inquisitor is going to be there in the final moments. That's your that's your guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my guarantee. And the idea of that these heists would be like OG Bioware missions, like the suicide mission, Ooh, the Mass Effect Two, like like the, the, Jack, the level of thought and depth this. put into them. Yeah, that's why I like that's why I like heists because you know this character can do that yeah. and that character can do this and you know and, and that's what that's what OG Bioware is to me is these epic missions and, and I, I love and as well of doing those. like the I'm thinking of Mass Effect 2 when you play so you fuck up everything and everyone dies I would love to have that <laughs> yeah, as an option yeah. in Dragon Age Yes, exactly. Like the whole multiple mm-hmm. choice thing and having different endings where Solas can destroy the veil and maybe he doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you see him and Mafal getting ready to do whatever, but oh yeah, or you have him where it's a really sad ending and, and, and everyone, you know, is, is sad that Solas has died, but Fadus is saved or whatever. And I really like that. So yeah, that's my very random, I, I admit stupid idea, but it's something in, in, in hopes of what I would like. Mm, all right. So you had your, you had your time. Now, Katie, please <laughs> illuminate us. What do Katie. you think? So i i, I want to I want to say my my version is maybe similar but different from Jack. So first, I if heist can come back because I don't know if they ever fully figured out how that would actually yeah. work within the engine. So let's say let, let's just assume it does. I will say I'm not going to guarantee anything because I'm always super bad at predicting the future. So just <laughs> throwing that out there, there is no Gilder Talon guarantee. It's just a maybe. Um, so. I, if, I would say instead of going, Jack, on your idea, instead of going to Heist and Elven Ruins, Arlathan and all the Elven Ruins were sacked by people in Tevinter. So I think there's no, Tevinter nobles Ooh. hoarding just these very important Ooh. artifacts in their households, museums, crypts, whatever yeah. the fuck. So I think you're actually going to be breaking into those places around Tevinter, which is Ooh. why the game's set in Tevinter. So you're, you're really just breaking into other people's homes and stealing their shit <laughs> because it's very important. <laughs> which, because everyone hates Tevinter, you're like, hey, that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. And which is also why you need to be a new protagonist, because you find out the Inquisitor, who is also associated with now a Magister and Dorian, uh, are breaking into other ma- like Magisters and very important people's homes. People are going to be very upset. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's something you can't really do on paper. So I think I think that's kind of going to be where this comes in. Now, who the protagonist is, so far out of the three, we've had two that this is kind of sort of have a MacGuffin thing going on, the Inquisitor with their hand, the Warden being the only Warden in Ferelden who's competent, and uh, Hawk was just some nobody. I would say that we kind of either we a, a heist goes wrong and we get something in the Inquisitor and now we're marked with some MacGuffin that we can do. Or we're some nobody like Hawk. I would kind of hope it's a nobody, but I think either could be happening. Okay, so you're, you're thinking it's a possibility that, like, you're part of a team that is uh, trying to steal mm-hmm. something from one of these, to, you know, Tevinter Lord's homes. And then, wait mm-hmm. a second, now you have a crazy magic thing, and now you're a part of the story. Yeah. <laughs> It's like attached to your arm and you can't get rid of it. What do you do? You know, like something like that. It's, which is essentially the mark from Dragon's yeah. Inquisition. So I think I would be most disappointed at that. And I just hope it's like you're just a really good thief and that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I could see something like one of those. Yeah, so happening. that's the intro. That's you're you're thinking maybe they are. Mm-hmm. I'm very interested in how you think, you know, this story, this Dragon H four story is gonna end. So that so far they have set up there's not so every dragon age game has more than just the main arc and i think there's three major arcs that they've been doing there's obviously the solace thing there's the canary invading and then there's slavery into vendor um all three of those have been yeah. ma- three major plot points and like th- like social change into vendor has been like a huge topic in both inquisition the comics and just just in the, the games in general so i think somehow you're gonna have to tie those all three all together um, at this moment, I'm not quite sure how to fit the canary there. I think that fitting in the um, slavery aspect can be actually pretty easy because uh, Fen Harel, Sarsolis, in the you know history of uh, Thetis, was once like he built his organization on freeing slaves. It'd be very easy for him to just to do it again, <laughs> you know. So all of his minions could just be the slavery, slaves of Tevinter, and he just, like, takes them under the wing. Like, you're now my people. Uh, also, I'm going to kill you the next couple of months, but you guys don't know that yet. Uh, so I, I could see that happening. And so we're trying to fight Solus as the struggle of who's going to get to free the slaves and who's going to have them on their mm-hmm. side. So I, I could see that being an issue. Yeah. The Canari, I think, might just be, like, kind of almost a red herring where, like, we, like Canari, can you just, like, hold on a second? Can you just... We, we have a whole world to save. <laughs> like, if anything, I think they're just going to be like, the, we need something to just mess up here so the Canary are going to come up and attack. I, I don't know if they're actually going to play that big of a deal unless they somehow have some sort of MacGuffin that was on Saharan that we don't know about. Okay. So, which we, we, we know they have been collecting elven artifacts and trespassers, so I think that's completely like uh-huh. plausible that they have. No, so the, those are the... Oh, sorry, um, continue. Oh, no, what, well, I would, those are that's, you know, what is plausible, I guess. But I I also want to know a little bit of like what you're hoping. Like, what do you what's that moment yeah. that you're hoping for in this game? If I'm really being honest, I would love and I think they've been inching towards this in the previous iterations for the choices that are made to have ground breaking consequences in the world, whether it has to do with the Titans, mm-hmm. whether it has to do with the Canari literally taking over to Vinter and <laughs> having a whole new regime in that way. I want to have the moments that I had in Dragon Age Origins where there was that sense of finality in the uh, epilogue mm-hmm. and experience that yeah. in Dragon Age 4. That is my biggest and almost only hope at this moment. So I'd love to hear some of your kind of hopes. I think you've been, both of you have been very See, diplomatic of, you know, we've been looking at this as what we think. <laughs> now get wild with it. You know, what what's going to make you... I put the tinfoil yeah, in, so... <laughs> I, I guess so, I... Uh, why I think it would be good to have, like, those very, like, big impacting moments. I don't know if they can do that anymore because they, they, they want to have a game series. Yeah. So, like, if... Even like we like we pick the ruler in Orlay. Like I don't know if we we'll actually ever go to Orlay again and have that choice matter. Just because <laughs> like there are so many choices that they have to juggle, it's going to be very mm-hmm. hard for them to like have other games and have that be a consideration. So I almost think that they're trying to future proof themselves in a way. So we're like the origin uh, epilogue has actually been one of the worst things for Dragon Age lore making, and as David Gator said, it was one of his yeah. biggest regrets because so many things they had to be rewritten. Uh, so I, I, as, as cool as it is, I don't, I don't know if they'll ever go that again, because it's just very hard to write for. Uh, you, you kind of have this thing in the game where like you start off all in the same place, the middle bits wildly different, and then you all end in the same place. And I think that's kind of what we're going to have to hope for with the current engine we're on. Mm. Jack? Um, yeah, so... (laughs) 
No, yeah. Um, <laughs> in terms of like, you want my massive mm-hmm. hope? Then we'll get, you know, an epilogue to... Uh, I, I'm playing a different mic, but I, I want an ep- an, a good epilogue to Solas's story. But of yeah. course we're going to get that. Um, do you want me to go there? Okay, okay, I'll go crazy for it. Griffins. There you go. <laughs> They, All right, that's we, fair. I, I, I do have, I, I, I know I'm more like, I don't like having hard facts with, you know, this speculation type of stuff because I, I, I don't know. I just, I don't think like that, I think. But one one thing I will say uh, to, to, to critique, critique uh, what you think about happening with Solas, I, I yeah. agree with you that he's going to either want to tear down the veil or die. Um, but I don't think the Inquisitor is going to die at all. Okay. Okay. That, that that I think that'd be kind of shitty to people who really hate Solas. So like, be, oh, I killed yeah. him and then I died. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah, what um, if you? What if your choice in Trespasser was to to then choose that you would kill Solas and that's why they die because they're too uh, vengeful to want to kill him that they end up in their own demise. So it's kind of a choice that's reflected on themselves. Th- then that would be a little bit better. But like, I I don't know. I'm still kind of iffy on. It. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think no, what I think is going to happen to Solas is, is no matter what, he is going to either get trapped in a way because it's very hard to kill um, the Evanuris, and he is considered one of them. So I think he has some. If anything, I think we might get a uh, very early on death of Solas, and we're like, oh, we fucking did Ooh, it. You oh know? wow, yeah, yeah. But yeah. then he rises up and be like, haha, nerds, <laughs> <laughs> you forgot I just destroyed elven gods, and you think that's going to kill me? That would so be nice. I I think that's going to be a moment in the game because that would be really interesting. Um, I also think at one point he's going to turn into the big bad wolf thing. And we're oh going to yeah, fight that. there is yeah. there is no That'd reality where you are not fighting a big wolf in Dragon Age Four. Yeah, which if yeah. You, if you're not, that is huge. Yeah. Mis- we didn't even think about that. Do you think this will be called huge. Dragon Age Four or it will be called something else? Oh no. Oh, that's a no. good question. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I know me and Kate talked about that, but obviously it's about the, the you know the numerical number. I I like the name Dragon Age Imperium, mm. but it's pretty boring. But it's DI again, isn't it? Yeah, so, that's you know, why I, I don't. DI, that you know. So and I don't know. Katie likes Dragon Age Unveiled. Unveiled. No, no. I, no, no. I have, I you have no like favorite. I don't think people yeah. want to say the word. I, unveiled. I joked Unveiled. Unveiled because I thought it was a, funny. I don't know if that's a good promo word. <laughs> okay. No, I know. Or it could just be Dragon Age Four. No, I don't think you do a number again because they they greatly regretted doing the Dragon Age Two mm. number. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, they, originally it was going to be Dragon Age Exodus, and they liked that one a lot. And then DA, then EA is like, mm, but no one's going to know it's Dragon Age, so they made Dragon Age two. Uh, so yeah, I do. I know it, it is. I don't. I really think it's going to have some sort of subtitle. I cannot even. Yeah. No, it, it might the even dreadful, be maybe like the Dreadful. Um, they seem to be doing those hashtags and pushing that. That's the basic form of media that they've done so far. Yeah. Yeah. It, it might be Rises, like Dragon Age Ooh, Rises. Like it might. That's be not bad. Oh, that that oh, goes off the tongue. That's not bad at all. D R. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I could I could be for that. Now I to I really want to quick, quickly throw out a theory that I have about the Solus thing. I think he's going to die no matter what, yeah, uh, or get trapped or something. But I think for a Lavellan, um, they're going to like really just smush it in with their little thumb about how painful this choice is. And so I'm basing this off of um, a movie that was actually referenced in Inquisition between uh, Solus and Cole. Uh, and the movie is called Meet Joe Black. Have mm-hmm. either of yep. you guys seen <laughs> that movie? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yep. you know the end of the the, the, the basic plot. Spoilers if you haven't seen it. Uh, the 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 movie is uh, death. Uh, some guy dies, meets a girl, or meets a girl, dies, and then gets possessed by death. Who then meets that girl again. The girl falls in love with death, and so he wants to take her with him. Like I'm going to take you on to the afterlife. And she's like, Oh, that's kind of scary. I'm going to think so. And he goes, Okay. Then from now on, you're always going to meet the guy that you met before, and then he's now someone new. I think it's going to be something like that, oh, where wow. if you go if you go into um, Solus's uh, companion quest, which really comes out of nowhere when you think about his whole storyline, his whole companion story quest yeah. is that he has a friend that he likes very much, and then the friend dies, and he's really sad about it. And when you ask him like, "Are you okay?" He's like, "Well, I mean, my friend will come back, but it's not mm. going to be the same." I think that's Ooh. foreshadowing what could happen to Solus, oh. and I think that's Solus's happy end, is that he's going to have some sort of like comeback again, but he's like either not going to have his memories, he's not going to be the same, something like that, and maybe that's the Solus you can reason with, and that's, that's the Solus clever. that um, I, I don't know the, the Lavellan runs away with, and maybe there's going to have to be a lot of decisions of like, yeah. can we yeah. trust this new Solus? Like, is he going to just do what he did before? If he's if he's kind of like. Can we can we make him good, so to speak? Is he on our side? Like I, I think that would be a more interesting ending to Solus' story. And I yeah. would like it if it ended there. Mm. 
That's a good, I like that. Do you believe it's Solas the spirit? I think originally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then he was brought into the world and mm-hmm. then he just got, was given a body. Mm-hmm. Uh, that idea could totally work with that idea. Obviously, if a spirit dies, they come back, but it's someone different. Mm-hmm. Could totally work. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want like another crazy ambition? What's that? Sorry. Go ahead. Sure. <laughs> do you want like another cra- like I, I'd like to see the Evanurus towards the mm-hmm. end of the game but like, yeah that's also like are they gonna put more Evanurus in the game but I feel like you know the way that, that you know, the veil the destruction of the veil would bring uh, I feel like the destruction of the veil would be like a midpoint or a 75% point for the game and then there would be this end like this this second part to the narrative where you would have the Evanurus return and you would have the consequences of that or if we were to see the consequences or what would happen with that I do think they are inching then, towards like, that like of where it is they've they've dealt with these worlds they dealt with the blight they dealt with what's going on in uh, Inquisition now there's going to mm-hmm. be some world sundering choices throughout yeah. i think yeah. it might do and, the classic bioware thing where wow there's tons of world sundering choices everything changes but then in the last 20 minutes everything kind of comes to the one same data point that everyone has <laughs> yeah like there that is likely but <laughs> and everyone's happy yeah. and we're all part I, I do think there there's a good possibility of that happening but i do think that we're gonna get and it's kind of again the way it's been going that it's just things need to get more epic things need to get more uh massive to the whole global world that we have here in uh dragon age mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well there is a climate for that we do have you know the mm-hmm. titans that are you know somewhat awaking we have two blights remaining we have solas and the veil potentially being destroyed and the evanuris that lurk behind the veil we and so many other- on a cure for the calling from yeah. a yeah. land that's not in Thetis. We have the, those across the sea, the executors. Like, yeah. There's also yeah. hinting at places that aren't anywhere. So what if right Dragon yeah. Age 4, this iteration, ends the story here of this part of the world? And the next iteration, allowing us to have some like real pretty final big choices for this world and then making the new iteration go to a completely new place that doesn't require as much of the uh, continuity that you would if you're still messing about in this area. So the Mass Effect Andromeda. The, yeah, the Mass exact Andromeda the Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> yeah, I would be fine with that. Yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. I'd be very happy with Dragon Age 4 wrapping up the whole story. Um Good luck with that, because there's a lot of loose yeah. ends. I, I just, I really there's do think they're going to make some some massive, big uh, choices in this one. It just, it, it feels like it's been ramping up to that. And uh, the problem that you said mm-hmm. of, you know, if they do do things that are uh, world rendering, it will destroy trying to build the series anymore. So yeah. seeing how they deal with that mm-hmm. will be absolutely fascinating. Is there any final thoughts and feelings that either of you would like to share about the world? Yeah. Of- I, I think that the end of Dragon Age will be Mafal's death. And I think that will usher on a new age. Because I and I know it's it's, it's very basic. Okay, yeah. But like Morrigan <laughs> is the inheritor of the next age and Mafal, who is Flameth or whatever is, mm-hmm. you know, it could be an OG dragon. And she just she could just be eponymous of the franchise as Dragon Age. Uh, Very simple, but that's what I think. Uh, yeah, I, could, I guess I could get behind that. I, I, I haven't thought about that, but I guess I could get behind it. Just to I, usher I, on, you know, a different age. So then you can have, you know, your next mm-hmm. age, whatever that could be called. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see, I would definitely say that Dragon Age should end when the actual... Like, for those who don't know the Thetis calendar, everything's been 100-year increments, and we're currently in the Dragon Age of the 100-year increments, and we're about halfway through it. So right. I would say if we end now, supposedly Dragon Age 4, let's let's be crazy, say it's five years after Trespasser, so it would be around, yeah. like, about in the, the midpoint. We still have 50 years of the age left, so I would even <laughs> think that there might be yeah. another game set kind of in that 50-year period um, where things yeah. would go crazy. Oh, I uh, like the idea yeah, of Dragon Age 4 that, being 50 years and showing, like, generational changes. I like that. That Ooh. would be interesting, yeah. Well, that would be really hard to have, like, well, maybe... Well, then you can almost have, like, a... Um, uh, what was that game? It was, like, a little, like, rogue dungeon game where, like, you kept playing your ancestor if you died. Ooh, that sounds familiar. Uh, yeah, it... Oh, God, what was that called? Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. something like that. You could, you could, like, breed. I mean, you're choosing romance <laughs> partners to breed to the perfect super soldier to fight Solus. You know what I mean? That, that's the craziest thing to happen. But, you know, I could, that could be interesting. Amazing. Well, I wanted to thank both of you so much. This is great. 
uh, diving into the world of Dragon Age with uh, two experts again. I'm Andy Burkowski, VGS Video Game Sophistry. You can check out all of the stuff that I'm doing there. It's a little more breadth than just Dragon Age. Can't compete with these two. And uh, yeah, please tell them, tell the world what you do and who you are as we finish this out. Jack, you go, because I started the intro. <laughs> now, thank you so much, Andy, for having us on. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm Jack Doe, and again, if there's any Dragon Age 4 news, I'll be covering it in the video. <laughs> Anything we hear, even if it's just a silly, dumb tweet, um, yeah, you can check out my channel for all those uh, silly tweets that Dara likes to tease. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm Katie. Uh, again, it, it, to echo uh, Jack, thanks for having us on, Andy. <laughs> Um, if you want news, you definitely go to Jack. Uh, <laughs> I'm more the Dragon Age lore. My YouTube channel yeah. is Gildothal, and you can find me on Twitter at Gildothal too. We're all I'll, I'll retweet the silly tweets, but like <laughs> I don't I don't got time to make news videos. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> so, so if you want lore in the Dragon Age, there then you, you come go. To me. But uh, well, we got to do this again, folks. This is a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, we'd love to. Yeah. Yeah, we loved it. I loved it. Awesome.